Boom. Welcome back, Meg. Oh my gosh, there I am. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Sorry I'm late, I was slacking. I I uh I, I feel like you're working overtime. That's uh that's what I We're working overtime you know, on vacation. That's how that's no how less. I feel. I feel like um I feel like our sliced efforts are in are in uh hyperdrive now. You know? They are. Yeah. It's really I mean things are ramping up. It's the playoffs. I heard you talk about the feedback, so obviously we're thinking about more sliced. So that's, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, Unless the feedback is like, nah, I'm good. One was enough. One season was enough. But <laughs> I have a feeling that won't be the feedback. I feel pretty confident about that. I, I, I hope that chat is like, please do this all the time and not please do this never again. Guys, should I quit my job and just become a game show host full time? Yeah. At least a game show host producer. <laughs> yeah, you know. Can we can we get claps in chat for Meg, y'all? Claps in chat for Meg for all the hard work behind the scenes. Y'all don't know. She puts in so much sliced effort. You know. I make tweets that have like at least half of them have a, some kind of typo. Um, <laughs> but I'm an intern, so that's <laughs> hey, look, look at all, look at all the chat love, Meg. All the chat love. Aww. There you go. Uh, chat, how are we feeling about the playoffs? So you you know, slightly different format. We will definitely see two people move on tonight, but that also, unfortunately, for the fans of two of the contestants tonight, that means uh, two of them, their journey ends here. We said bye to eight of them last week. You get to say bye to another two this week. But that does mean it's all on the line. From here on out, every night, it's all on the line. That credit. That's, that's exciting. Isn't that incredible, Meg? Yes. I just realized um, I really, truly have been slacking. Like on Slack? Slacking. No, not on Slack. Genuine, real slacking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just like doing it live, doing it live. Yeah, more power to you, Meg. More power to you. Okay. What, uh, who who's on? Uh, what teams are we seeing tonight, y'all? Who's a uh, who's a uh, team Jordan, team Michael, team D Rob, team Landon? What are we? Uh, what what's what's the chat vibes before we get going? All right, we see one for Team Michael already. Greg says hard. We got Team Doctor Doctor Ob. Yes, Doctor Ob. Yeah, D Rob. You know, someone. Someone. Oh, yeah. Do we got a couple couple of doctors? <laughs> D Rob as Doctor Ob. <laughs> we got Doctor Nick Wan as well. That's true. And I'm a slacker. I dropped out of my PhD. Yeah. <laughs> No doctor for me. Nerd Mom O2 says Landon. I uh, I can only imagine whose mom is Nerd Mom. Oh uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think 100% of the people that are in this room, vir this virtual digital room, are nerds. So That's we all have moms, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> all right, y'all. A couple minutes before we we're gonna get going here. Lots of uh, Michael. It looks like lots of Michael, lots of D-Rob. A handful for Landon. No, no Jordan? No Jordan fans? No Jordan fans? We don't even, like, we don't even see Kyle, Jordan's, you know, arch nemesis from the pilot season, shouting out Jordan. You can't pick two. You can't pick Jordan and Landon fans. You have <laughs> Jordan and Landon fan. You can only pick one. <laughs> Boom. Jordan, then. <laughs> it worked. Boom. <laughs> that wasn't a real sliced roll, but you okay. <laughs> All right, Meg. Um, I think it's time to get it going. All right. So we'll see y'all soon, chat. We will see y'all soon. And uh, welcome back, everyone.
Welcome back, Meg. Welcome back, Nick. Oh my goodness, the playoffs! Are you uh, are you excited, Meg? Yeah, I am actually very excited. This is my first like playoffs, probably of any sport that I've ever paid attention to. <laughs> of any sport? To, yeah, of any sport, and I, I have to pay like ultimate attention. For like the next however many hours, right? Like two and a half <laughs> hours, two, two hours, three, three hours, yeah. Oh my goodness, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I, you know, when I was working for the Reds, uh, I only just barely got to enjoy a playoff trip with the team, and uh, um, yeah, this is also, I guess, in some, some, to some extent, my first playoff trip as well in any competitive thing. Oh, that's so awesome! Very <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah, and I'm I'm so excited to spend it with you know chat, spend it with our contestants tonight. Um, I'm excited because yeah, the contestants are giving me kind of really good vibes tonight. They're um, do you, yeah, they do, are yeah. Do you I think feel, nervous with anticipation tonight? I was gonna say, do you feel the uh, the energy coming off of them during sound check? I do. Yes. So. Um, Landon, for instance, kind of joked that he'll be competing from a Starbucks tonight, and we could, oh, it's a, he's not serious. Um, and then he said he's literally shaking right now. It is freezing in star- Starbucks right now. Um, so I think he might actually be in a Starbucks. Um, he he is actually <laughs> he's actually in a Starbucks, maybe. Yeah, yeah, he might be actually be in a Starbucks. And D Rob says, "Don't worry, machine learning is a dish best served cold." So. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, they're having some like great banter, banter right now. So, um, yeah, kind of sharing a couple of tips. Like, yeah, so it's it's great. I'm sensing good vibes tonight. Yes, um, two uh, two elite modelers, and truly, we have four elite modelers, four elite data scientists, competitors tonight. And let's uh, have them introduce themselves right now. Landon Buechner, Texas A&M alumni and upcoming data scientist. My name is Jordan Wilheim, and I'm a data scientist. I'm Michael Malarkey. I'm the director of data science at the Lab for Scale of Mental Health. David Robinson, principal data scientist at Heat. All right, we have our four contestants. And right now, uh, we're on... Oh God, I need to click buttons now. We are on Jordan <laughs> Wilhelm's yes. screen. Uh, what do we got on Jordan, Meg? Yeah, so I want to tell you a little bit about Jordan and how he came to be with us today in the first episode of our playoffs. Um, so Jordan, uh, from uh, his two, uh, two rounds through the two laps in the regular season scored 79 points and that put him in third place. So he's actually tied uh, coming into the playoffs with uh, with Michael. Um, of course, you know, points don't carry over from the regular season to the playoffs, but that's kind of where he stood um, in the competition uh, up till today. Um, and to give you just kind of a sense of like where his, his strengths are, he was in the bottom half in terms of data viz. Actually, all of our competitors tonight um, we're tied at, well, not all, with the exception of D-Rob, all of our competitors were tied at just 14 points, which is fairly low. Um, and he has no golden feature points, but he has finished first in modeling both laps. Um, so he is, you know, that's where his strengths are. And we'll see if he kind of continues that trend 
uh, in our playoff playoff episode tonight. So oh. we'll, we'll probably expect some strong modeling from all of our contestants, but Jordan has a good track record here. All right, let's go to our youngest competitor and let's talk a little about uh, Landon and uh, uh, maybe best to first mention yeah. a new data scientist, Landon Buechner. Yes. Yeah, we had to update his Chiron for the episode tonight because previously it said on the job market, Landon Buchner, congrats to Landon. Actually, can we say claps and chat to Landon for landing a job? That's uh, in part, I believe, thanks to you know the skills and talent and dedication that he's showcased on Sliced. So that's um, right. Yes. Yeah. Which has been quite notable. So he uh, is actually first and was in first place uh, in our regular season with ninety four points. So. You know, a fair bit ahead of our um, uh, tied for third place contestants, Michael and Jordan. Uh, and he, similar to Jordan, finished first place in modeling in both laps. Um, and he has, you know, as we've seen, you know, I think both of the art contestants, Jordan and Landon, have been doing a lot of competing on the off episodes and nights that they're not competing. They're still making submissions to the Kaggle leaderboard. Um, we are not watching somebody write code at the moment, are we? I think we're watching land in load in data. Okay. Oops. <laughs> Not allowed. No. Um, I I would assume this might just be uh, the nerves getting to land in. Luckily, yep. he hasn't done anything other than load in. Yep. But uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I let him know. Yes. Um, you know, jitters. <laughs> Uh, he sees that ping soon. Yeah, jitters. Um, that's okay. Sometimes uh, playoff jitters play off. Anxiety, uh, it's a thing. It is, it is a thing. <laughs> he's he's still going. <laughs> Speaking of uh, folks who probably uh, are a little less affected by maybe uh, the playoff environment, let's talk a little about D Rob. Yeah, so D Rob was actually in fifth place in the regular season scoring 71 points. So he was actually knocked out of the top four in last week's episode, I believe by Landon himself. Um, and so he was just barely bumped out of the top four, but he was voted into tonight's episode into the playoffs by chat and our top four contestants. Um, uh, and, you know, David, he's performed really well. D Rob has performed really well in terms of modeling, of course, uh, but he's actually, you know, among our contestants tonight is by far best in data visualization. Uh, so he pulled in 26 points versus the 14 for all of our other co contestants, uh, which puts him, you know, among everyone from the regular season, just behind Josh, who, uh, scored 30 points in data viz, uh, in the regular season. And we'll be seeing Josh next week. Um, but yeah, we'll see tonight if David and Josh or others will be uh, facing off in the final four or not uh, after next week's uh, second playoff episode. That's right. Um, <laughs> and um, we'll talk a little about Michael in a second, but let's have Michael himself talk about himself. So I'm Michael Malarkey, and I got a PhD in clinical psychology from UT Austin. And I actually literally, as of today, I am the director of data science at the Lab for Scalable Mental Health at Stony Brook University. You probably can't see this super well, but it basically it's a little sheet of paper that has the number 8,973. 8,973 is about the estimate of the number of teenagers who get diagnosed with a mental health problem each day. We were able to get people from all 50 states to do a digital intervention and we improved their depression over the course of months. People should root for me because they can probably see themselves in me at least a little bit. There are a lot of folks I'm sure who are on the channel who like are trying to figure things out on their own. You know, a lot of people could be me. I'm super excited. A little nervous, but you know, I think I think I can I think I can still do some stuff. It's gonna be fun. And uh, how did Michael get to the playoffs, Meg? One second. All right, so Michael is you know he was tied in third place overall in the regular season with Jordan, scoring seventy nine points. 
Um, he, of all of our contestants tonight, he has the overall lowest modeling score, bringing you know, we're bringing with him just thirty points um, from from modeling. And as I mentioned, he's alongside Landon and Jordan in terms of data visualization as well. Um, but he is the only contestant from our regular season who is able to pull in any chat points. Um, so all of our other contestants uh, never earned any chat points. So. Uh, Michael is a chat favorite, but we'll see how that changes when you know he's matched up against uh, D. Rob, Jordan, and Landon tonight. Okay. Um, we've also seen that he's been, uh, you know, polishing a lot of his data visualization uh, in some great posts that he's been making on on Twitter on sliced and tidy tidy Tuesday data. So we'll see. Very possible we might see uh, Michael Malarkey evolve into a new data visualization monster tonight. We'll see who comes out on top. Uh, a little about the rules for those first uh, joining us. Welcome everyone, Is if this is your first time on Sliced, uh, we do appreciate you coming in and uh, uh, what, a, what a great way to get going in Sliced uh, by starting on the first episode of the playoffs. So, uh, clean slate for all of our contestants. Uh, the regular season standings no longer matter. Uh, the rules of Slice is very simple. Uh, the The contestants all just got data at 8.45 uh, p.m. Eastern. Uh, you can also access that data by typing exclamation data in chat. Uh, they've never seen this data before, and they have two hours starting at 9 p.m. to create a predictive model, uh, in this case, predicting on uh, home runs, uh, and we'll talk a little about our data set in a second. Uh, along the way, they'll be creating data visualization and also trying to uh, do random good coding practices or things that they might find along the way in their data exploration and prediction, uh, all the while trying to win, uh, win over uh, all the votes in chat to win uh, your support at the end of the night. All of these things uh, relate to points uh, we award 30 points to the best uh, model. Uh, we judge model by uh, RMS, or we judge model by log loss tonight. Uh, so lowest log loss wins 30. Second lowest wins 10 points. Third lowest wins five. Best data visualization, uh, that's 40 points total. And me and Meg will split up 20 points each and uh, assign data visualization points uh, to who we believe has the best data visualization uh, based off whatever criteria me and Meg uh, may be, uh, you know, judging by at the time. And uh, we also have something called Golden Features. Meg, what are our Golden Features tonight? Yeah, so I can tell you a little bit about our Golden Features. So um, actually, our, both of our Golden Features, now that we're in the playoffs, are worth 10 points, I believe. Um, so our first golden feature is to plot pitch location uh, with hue by home runner, whether it was a home run or not. Uh, and the second golden feature, again, worth 10 points, is to aggregate home run rate by park. All so right. We'll be keeping an eye out for those things. So some aggregation, some data visualization. If you find uh, your, your contestants tonight doing any of those, that is 10 points each. And also at the end of the night, uh, we will award uh, chat or chat will award points to who they think uh, is their favorite contestant of the night. Uh, so the top vote getter from chat will get 10 points and the second uh, place chat vote getter will get five points tonight. So a slight rule change from the regular season. Hopefully this will uh, keep our focus uh, strongly on the data visualization, the modeling, and finding some uh, some data visualization specifics and some uh, aggregation specifics tonight in terms of golden features. Um, so, uh, without without a, uh, I guess before we get too far into it, let's talk a little or let's uh, let's mention some of our uh, our supporters of the stream all the way through the regular season and through the playoffs. Uh, please chat. Let's get hearts in chat and claps in chat for our studio. Uh, thank you, our studio, for all the support through the regular season into the playoffs. Thank you, Streamlit. Thank you, NVIDIA, for the support. 
And thank you, uh, Z by HP. Uh, if you're a data scientist looking for uh, pre-built machines built built for data science, check out hp.com slash data science. All right, Meg. Oh, how are you feeling? Away. How, how are you feeling? How are you feeling now? It feels like qualitatively different now that we're in the playoffs. You know, like this is this is like an incredible matchup that we have. And I'm already just thinking about like how tense the championship is going to be. Like um, it's it's pretty it's a pretty incredible feeling. I'll be honest. Um, so very, very excited to see how things play out tonight. I think this is an exciting data set. Um, really, really great to see kind of like just like the evolution of our contestants over the regular season. And yeah, looking forward to, to seeing how like their approaches change now that they've got a clean slate uh, in the playoffs. We are checking out uh, Jordan, Googling some uh, information about baseball. And uh, maybe we should talk a little about our data set tonight, Meg. Yeah, let's do it. I did say I am excited about this this data set. Um, so it is a data set about uh, baseball, um, Major League Baseball. So um, we have a data set that has a variety of uh, features about whether a batter's hit is resulting in a re home run or not. So that's the event is like a, a hit. Uh, yeah, what is baseball? Um, <laughs> don't ask me to explain that. Um, and so they've got features like uh, kind of like the characteristics of um, the the pitch itself, like its speed, um, uh, you know, where it uh, ends up in the strike zone. I believe that is what it's called. We've got information about the pitcher, whether they're left or right handed. We've got that same information about the batter, um, what team they're on, who they're playing, yada, yada. We've also uh, uh, done something similar this episode as we did last episode, and we've got uh, a supplementary auxiliary data set that they can work with that has information about uh, the park that the game is taking place at. Um, so that has information about um, the size of the field. Obviously, that is um, different for each park and obviously has an impact on whether they're going to have a, uh, or yeah, like whether they will have a home run or not. Or, um, depending on distance, um, whether it's covered, etc. And so they want to use that data set. It's both going to, you know, help with their modeling as well as uh, be a potential way that they can um, uh, uncover one of the golden features, the um, home run rate per park. So, yeah, that is our data set tonight. The uh, metric is uh, log loss. Uh, so it's predicting binary variable. So metric is log loss. And I will also remind folks that uh, we very much welcome and love and appreciate audience participation. So <laughs> I don't know what we're looking at here. This is a land in uh, killing time, I think, before 9 yes. p.m. But I... Yeah, so he's he started coding, so he's going to take 10 minutes to apparently play this uh, <laughs> snake type of game. Uh, so, um, but yeah, as I was saying, um, if you are interested in uh, competitive data science so much that you want to participate along with our contestants, you can do that. You can find the data set at exclamation point data. That'll take you to the Kaggle page where you can uh, accept the competition rules, download the data, and then uh, train a model and submit your predictions. And that will get you on the leaderboard. And if you're the top chat contestant on the leaderboard who hasn't won in a previous week, you will uh, stand to win some Kaggle swag of your choosing. Um, and you will also win a code to redeem a free NVIDIA Deep Learning Institute training course. Um, thanks to our supporter, NVIDIA. Uh, um, we, we already see D-Rob jumping in strong <laughs> with the meme game here. <laughs> yeah, D-Rob's been, D-Rob's yeah, been traced. He's been, he's been training. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, also, notice how he's calling out Landon here. <laughs> I know. I know. He. I mean, there's been. I think that's been one of my like most exciting moments of Sliced is seeing like the Landon D Rob like tension. Like, I really wanted to see them play uh, on the same night in the playoffs for exactly this kind of reason. We saw, <laughs> you know, on nights that D Rob was competing, we saw Landon's name on the leaderboard like either a 
above D Rob's name or like just you know within a hair's distance. Um, and so that 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 uh, you know they're both obviously really strong modelers. Um, and yeah, so I'm loving it. I hope Chad is loving it too. We're taking a look at Jordan Wilhelm's screen. He has loaded in the data. He was looking already at um, park information. Um, for those who are unfamiliar with baseball, uh, baseball is an American sport. It is now a big international sport as well. Uh, one of the interesting factors about baseball and hitting home runs is that not all baseball parks are built the same. So a home run, say in Yankee Stadium where the New York Yankees play, a home run to right field is actually uh, different. It's actually a shorter distance than home run in City Field just across uh, the way uh, where the New York Mets play. So uh, uh, you can have different home run distances, which makes predicting home runs actually uh, a little difficult since you do have this effect of the park. So uh, we'll see how they sort of incorporate uh, this data set that we've also given that gives park dimensions as well as how they're gonna fill in some of the missing data um, because not all the data is complete tonight. We have a, a good Ooh. amount of missing data uh, based off the physics data that uh, that they could use to train a really accurate home run model, but uh, not all of it's there. So we'll see how they impute tonight as well. Um, you think that if they knew the air density on the night of, uh, of, the, of the game, would that help them? <laughs> with their predictions, Nick? Do you think that air density would be predictive? I'm not going to lie. I uh, was trying to find some uh, humidity and air pressure data, but I, I couldn't find uh, enough weather data in time. So Yeah, that would be, <laughs> <laughs> it would be hilarious. Yeah. Um, um, I also saw in chat a blaze ball for the win. Go LA Ultimate Tacos. Yes, I'm a baseball fan. That's right. Um, yeah, so welcome back, Crystal. Uh, Crystal Lance is a dear friend of mine. So just trolling. That's nice. It's good. Also, uh, welcome back, everyone in chat. Ethan, Sri, Span, Afton, Trevin, Eric. I, uh, if I missed your name, I'm sorry. It's, you know, chat is what it is. But uh, I do appreciate everyone coming in and... Sticking around for uh, the playoffs, we've made it through eight weeks of regular season. Here we are at the playoffs. 96 of you hanging out for the playoffs tonight. And uh, hopefully we see a lot more of y'all, not just tonight, but into the following weeks of the playoffs. We already see uh, some data viz coming on from D-Rob here. It looks like he's plotted um, percent of hits in the park. Um, that end up going for home runs, perhaps? Yes. So that's that's our golden feature, right? Um, Is that home run rate? If if he's if he aggregates, this is just but this is the visualization, right? Uh, like we're looking for like some sort of aggregation. He did. I mean, isn't that what that is? He had to do that. Yeah, it's his group by park. Oh yeah, you're right. He did. Okay, yeah. okay. I thought he was just like letting like some sort of box plot do all of it for him. But uh No, no. yeah, I think he definitely did that, yeah. Okay, yeah, that is wow, I think that's our earliest golden feature ever. Yes. Wow. That and that's ten points. And that's probably gotta be pretty gratifying, or will be when he finds out pretty gratifying for D Rob, because I know he was just a tad bit salty about some of the golden features that were featured on you know episodes uh, where he was a contestant during the regular season. Especially that was the that was the air density reference. That's right. <laughs> that's right. And especially when you know D. Rob himself has uh, you know he has multiple times I feel now has uh, talked about um, how he hasn't been able to find golden features. So uh, on top mm -hmm. of oh wow, look at this, calling me out. <laughs> 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 uh, luckily for you, D. Rob, when you watch this back, you sure did, buddy. You yep, <laughs> that's how, yeah. <laughs> that's incredible. Yeah. Um, speaking of like early golden features, uh, I do want to kick off our episodely 
don't know, is that a, is that a verb? Um, uh, episode <laughs> prediction. Um, Want to know what we what we're feeling tonight? You know, now that you know chat, you've seen the data set, you've seen the challenge. Will one of our contestants be able to make a submission for 9:30 p.m. Eastern tonight? Yes or no? You've got two minutes to get in your predictions. Let us know what you think. And uh, if again, if you're interested in following along, checking out the leaderboard, or or participating and submitting to the leaderboard. Exclamation data will get you to the Kaggle uh, page that the contestants are working off of. And also, uh, all of everyone out there, let's uh, code along. Uh, you will grab your data from there and submit there as well. So it uh, looks a little like this. Um, poof. Uh, Ooh, and so, so, so tiny. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> it was a, a little small there. Um, looks a little like this, y'all. Uh, you'd probably land here on the overview page. But if you click data, you scroll down, you can download all the data and work through all this. Uh, and then by the time you're done, maybe check the leaderboard. And we don't see any submissions here quite yet in terms of leaderboard. Uh, but soon enough, y'all, I'm sure you, uh, a bunch of you in chat and also our four contestants will start seeing some leaderboard stuff. Uh, speaking of stuff we're seeing, Landon, one minute away uh, from uh, no, no longer timing himself out, and he is doing some type racer. So uh, uh, perhaps working on his, uh, you know, words per minute. Maybe that's, uh, you know, helping him prep for the furious coding that he might be doing over the next... Uh... He's like keeping his hands warm while he's in the freezing cold Starbucks, I think <laughs> is what he must be doing, yeah. That's right. Unfortunately, he uh, he lost in, in that contest, but uh, maybe, you yeah. know, maybe he's just trying to get the losing out of his mind and, like, uh, yes. you know, focus focus on just letting things rip in, in, uh, in Slice tonight. Uh, we see Mike Malarkey. He is working on some uh, group buying and D-player work here as well. Uh, we do see some data viz already from Jordan Wilhelm's screen. That looks like he is plotting uh, home run versus not. And uh, uh, looks like he's binning uh, launch speed. Uh, so depending on the launch speed, uh, remember this problem... Uh, a lot of folks will probably have remembered this problem in other ways, like go back to like Calculus 1 or Algebra 2 or whatever class where you had to calculate projectile motion. Maybe it's Physics 101. I don't know what you had to do. But projectile motion, a lot of uh, different intro physics or, or math courses, they'll use baseball projectile motion as like an example of how far something might have to go and how to calculate um, distance using speed and, uh, and angles and, and whatnot. Um, Meg, did you ever have to do like projectile motion problems in, in your math classes? Um, if I did, I've probably purged it from my memory. <laughs> <laughs> I was you know, definitely more comfortable with statistics. I've taken a lot of statistics courses. Math was never my favorite subject, I will say. I see. I see. Yep. Yeah. I just did progressively worse at math through like I was always in like the top the top math class, but like barely hanging on. Uh barely hanging on. Oh, yeah, yeah. I see, I see. I um yeah. you know, I I do remember um shout out to uh Santa Rosa Junior College professor Tom Falbo. Uh, Professor Falbo, Instructor Falbo, uh, Tom, as he usually wanted to be called, um, he his uh, calculus calc one projectile motion unit was all about baseball. Um, actually, he would spend oh. a lot of his time talking about baseball, uh, like it was one of those like you know Tuesday Thursday classes that last like an ungodly mm -hmm. long time. And he would spend like maybe two thirds of it talking about baseball. It was he he was this was before I watched. Was it formative for you? No, like, it wasn't. It like wow. I because I didn't really like watch baseball at that time. Like I didn't get in baseball yeah. until like late into college. 
Did it get, were you excited? Were you, were you excited about math? Like, did, were you, uh, were you into math? No, no, I wasn't. I, uh, math was always like a tool, but I never really wanted to learn more about it. I just wanted right. to know how to do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Means to an end kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I was, yeah. I was much more interested in the applications of it, you know? Yeah. I think that's why I liked statistics more. Cause it was always like within the context of like a research methods course or, you know, I got a degree in psychology, so mm. yeah, it was much more applied. <laughs> Uh, maybe maybe I didn't have ma math classes where you know everything was like contextualized by like cool stuff like baseball and whatever. We do see um, Jordan plotting by home team right now, actually by batter team. Oh, okay, okay, now he's plotting by home team. Okay, so it's possible he is picking up a little info about the park i don't necessarily know how deep baseball knowledge is for our contestants tonight it seems that maybe d rob knows a little about baseball uh unsure about landon jordan and michael i don't know how much baseball they know um but regardless the feature set isn't so large uh mm -hmm. isn't so large that like it's impossible to figure out uh, some of the key features of how to predict a home run um so we'll see how they attack it, uh, regardless of their knowledge of baseball. We do see Landon starting now, by the way. It looks like he is uh, reading yep. through the Pi Baseball uh, uh, API, which is interesting. This is an interesting way oh. to kind of collect some Are you... domain knowledge. Are you familiar with the... Uh... I am familiar. I am very familiar with this package. Uh, we've used it on yeah. my stream a lot. Nice. Um, so the data itself, you can actually query the exact same data. Well, not the exact same data, but pretty close to the same data through this package. Uh, they wouldn't be able to reproduce uh, the data set we have. Uh, they don't have access to that. But um, that's good. <laughs> but uh, it is interesting to see. Uh, Landon digging into uh, some API here, and maybe he'll uh, try to figure out some external data to, to help uh, uh, model with here. But uh, uh, <laughs> I will, I will let, I will, I'll just let everyone know all so uh, all the key features to predict home runs they're in the data set already. So. <laughs> cool, they got what they need. That's <laughs> I do see, I do see from NS Champs in chat. D. Rob wrote something, a book, blog post, I don't know, titled Introduction to Empirical Bayes, Examples from Baseball Statistics. So I think D. Rob might be in his element tonight. Um, All right. So. That's, you know, it's so exciting. I wonder what it feels like when you get a data set that um, feels comfortable, like you know somewhat of the domain of the data set. I mean, it probably feels great because, you know, the whole kind of premise of Sliced is that you don't know what you're about to be handed. You don't know how things are going to play out. You don't know what your contestants, you know, or how they're going to approach things. And so you kind of like want to grasp on to any kind of bit of familiarity that you can. Right. Um, so I'm sure I'm sure it feels great. I do see Landon uh, uh, working on. Uh, ingesting as much information from the readme here as possible. Um, I, I hope that works out for him. You know, I uh, there, it's it's pretty difficult if you aren't familiar with baseball and uh, you aren't necessarily familiar with baseball statistics uh, or things that help predict home run, for example. Uh, so so unlike other data sets, maybe he he's feeling a little uh, out of his element here unlike D-Rob, who apparently has written blog posts that have turned into books about baseball. so. <laughs> but, I mean, Landon certainly has to have built a lot of confidence over the last uh, seven weeks, you know, both through his, his own participation on episodes where he was a contestant and also those off episodes where he performed really well on the, on the Kaggle leaderboard. That is right. And I, I do wonder... Uh, if uh, his modeling will carry him through. We do see some entries already from some of the folks in chat. Uh, what do we got? Uh, we do have Just Linear tonight. 
uh, with uh, uh, on the leaderboard with a point one RMS or er, log loss, and uh, Marshall Furman, who we've seen a few times before as well, uh, on the leaderboard tonight. So two, uh, none of our contestants quite yet though. So people still uh, people putting uh, nice. projections or predictions already up. And I, I don't, I do not recognize those names. So if we have new people from chat participating, that is doubly awesome. Very cool. Yeah, D Rob going to work immediately on some interesting uh, ridge plot, uh, density plot looking facets here. Uh, we do see Jordan's stream. Jordan did say his internet connection is a little spotty. Uh, we'll come back to Jordan in a bit. Landon is literally digging through <laughs> this API. I wonder how close he's going to be able to get uh, with uh, with all the knowledge that he's trying to take from this readme here. You think he's maybe overthinking things? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I, I definitely haven't seen this approach from Landon before. Uh, yeah. So I do wonder how he's gonna how he's gonna do it. Uh, oh, and here we are with um, with a Sankey from Sankey. Wow, just busting out a Sankey and BD. Very cool. <laughs> from Michael Malarkey, he was working on this uh, over the last handful of weeks. He was posting a few uh, of his data visualizations on Twitter. Sankey plots were one of them, and so. Uh, uh, there it is. He's uh, he's got a little Sankey plot going on here, and it looks like it's. Did we uh, catch what he's actually plotting? Uh, uh, no, he's uh, oh. he's messing with uh, his plot a bit. So uh, maybe this one time here, we can take uh, another look once this cell runs. At some point, maybe we'll come back to it in a second. Let's go back okay. over. Looks like he's like comparing like batter versus pitcher attributes or something that's right we are having some you know issues with um jordan's screen um it is still kind of a little frozen on my end unsure if that's a me thing or a him thing but we'll check. i'm having no problem he's check uh right now jordan's checking out like uh the the missingness in the data set okay it might be a me thing then i think it might be because i'm having no problems checking out uh, yeah, he's done, we can see all of his kind of like just histogram distribution stuff. And now he's just, yeah, he's taking a look using the missing no package, looking at uh, the variables in the data set that have uh, missing missing data. Um, so launch speed, launch angle have uh, missing data. Okay, well, while we are thinking about, uh, while I am going to debug a little of my side of things, maybe... Uh, let's hear a little from Jordan Wilhelm himself in his biography. My name is Jordan Wilhelm. I work as a data scientist for a uh, genetic testing company focusing on clinical genetic testing. I got this guitar maybe six months ago after having a shitty guitar for like, I don't know, 15 years. I, I think I definitely get really anxious if I don't have a guitar around me. There, I don't, I don't really see a good reason why people should root for me. I'm, I'm like, I'm like clawing in my brain trying to figure out a good, a good reason why I'm like more rootable than other people. Gosh, what, can I ask what other people said for this answer? In the first season of Slice, I did have some of the best models. I wouldn't say I'm the best at storytelling or visualization, but my models are pretty good. On the first episode of Slice last season, it was very exhilarating to have the best model. Definitely felt like my blood pressure went up, like like my heart was beating. I was just feel I just had this rush, and I'm really chasing that rush again. Yeah. So let me tell you a little bit about Jordan and pre-show Q&A that he and I did uh, right before the episode tonight. Uh, so I had a few questions for Jordan um, that I wanted to share with the audience tonight. 
So in addition to what we've you know already learned about Jordan, super into riding bikes, etc., I asked him, you know, are you, are you watching the Olympics? What's your favorite summer Olympic? I'm trying to get more into like competitive sports and things like that, right? So um, he said swimming is his fa- favorite Olympic summer Olympic sport, um, but he uh, also likes Olympic diving specifically when they mess up. Uh, apparently, it's really funny, uh, you know to see Olympic divers like do belly flops or whatever. So uh, yeah, he loves Olympic diving and swimming. Um, I also asked, um, and it'd be fun to compare our contestants answer today. I also asked, is a hot dog a sandwich? Uh, and Jordan's take on this is yes, a hot dog is a sandwich um, because a sandwich doesn't need to be uh, just two pieces of bread. Uh, so that, makes a hot dog actually an open-faced sandwich, uh, which, you know, is, I think, you know, the, hot, the is a hot dog a sandwich debate is a long storied debate, but I don't think I've ever heard that angle on the rationale for why a hot dog is a sandwich, that it's an open-faced sandwich. Um, and then finally, you know, I asked him, you know, what words do you have for Sliced and the folks that are watching the playoffs tonight? And he said, I hope you're having... Or you're, I hope you're enjoying Sliced as much as I am. And I said, that means you're enjoying Sliced, right? And he said, whether I'm enjoying it is a mystery. So that is uh, Jordan. <laughs> he's, a, he's a mysterious guy. Uh, he, he, also, he also said... He was nervous when I said I had some pre-show Q&A that I wanted to do with him. He said, but I have no personality. <laughs> and I said, don't worry, my questions are designed to extract extract some personality. So he likes to see Olympic divers do belly flops. And he thinks hot dogs are sandwiches because they're specifically an open-faced sandwich. Like, those are things you can hang a personality on, you know, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's see. I don't eat a lot of hot dogs. And the last hot dog that I had, specifically at a ballpark, actually had nothing on it for some very, very weird reasons that maybe I will explain or not. But normally, I think I would like relish and mustard on my hot dog. Ooh, pretty sanky. Um, yeah, yeah, relish relish and mustard, I would say. Um, I'm not a huge fan of ketchup, but I will I will eat a hot dog with ketchup it's, on it. It's very, uh, very Chicago of you. I feel like there's someone, there's some Chicago folk in chat who may, yeah. uh, who may appreciate your anti- ketchup stance on hot dogs nice <laughs> um, Tony is saying that Nick is muted I oh know. yeah I, I was but, but, fixed but, okay but luckily since you Ooh, know I didn't uh, see when that was <laughs> uh, I, I noticed when chat was yelling at me yes. oh good I, I, good yes yeah, so, you know oh, we're a new show these things happen how long are we going to be able to say that? <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, is it a sandwich? I would say yes. Um, by the way, oh, our what was our other golden feature, Meg? Our other golden feature is just pitch location with Hugh by home run or not. Well, I believe hmm. D-Rob has yet again. Oh my god. <laughs> um... <laughs> Okay, I think that, <laughs> so he's not super familiar with like things like air density and meteorological data. He is familiar with baseball data and apparently that makes all the difference because D-Rob already has 20 points <laughs> for finding both golden features. Well done. Yes, he does have plate X, plate Z. Um, I mean, that looks like it could be published in his book about baseball statistics. Yes, and he has percent that is home run. Uh, so that is, that is, uh, quite literally hewing by, by percent here, quite literally hewing by home run. So, uh, 
Uh, that is literally 20 points out the gate for Damn. D-Rob. That is damning fast. Okay, well, surely he's not also going to be on the leaderboard. Just need to check. Okay, so far, I don't think any of our contestants are on the leaderboard yet. So. We do see a ridge plot coming out of Michael Malarkey's screen. We did see a Sankey as a pitch type uh, going into handedness. Uh, we're now seeing a ridge plot uh, pitches miles per hour per, for a pitch uh, over the course of innings. Um, the interesting he thing here is, even though you're splitting by innings, uh, you may think that pitch velocity should sink as you get further into the game, but because one pitcher doesn't necessarily pitch at all times, you do have relief pitchers. Uh, mm. The uh, miles per hour actually does not necessarily fall off in the later innings of the game. Um, but very interesting plot here. Uh, he's got the ridge plot going with uh, some scatter values in there as well. Uh, we are seeing... Really pretty. Yeah, very heavy aesthetics coming from... Uh... If you had to get a, a, a data visualization, Nick, that was not a shap plot, as it like a tattoo... Like what would that data vis be? If I if I was gonna get a tattoo of uh yeah. of a data vis. Of any yeah. data vis? Any data vis except for shap plots. Oh. I have eliminated that from your tattoo repertoire. Um, um uh I you know, I'm just gonna go with like it would be on my thigh, it would be the tufty uh March Napoleon Oh, Data the vision. classic, yeah, <laughs> super classic, yeah. I would, I would just get it right, right on the thigh, you know. Nice, just nice. a bunch of zigzagging, yep, lines. Nice. That makes me want to do the the um, who was it? Snow that did the like, was it like Listeria or whatever diphtheria or whatever that water thing is? Like the the data visualization of like those like. Water pumps. Yes. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Somebody help in chat. You know what I'm... People who are data viz fans. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was cholera. It was the cholera plot. Co you know, I'm sure I know what you're talking about. I'm sure I know what you're talking about. I I can't picture it in my mind, though. It was it was like a plotting... Uh, like a cholera outbreak and then plotting uh, the location of, I think, like... Um, like water wells or water pumps. And you could see there was like a cholera outbreak wherever there was like this certain water pump that was like, yeah, infected. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. It was um, John, John Snow. John Snow cholera map. Cholera map. Yeah, John Snow cholera map, if you Google that. I will take a look. Let's see, we're at 9.30. Have we seen anything from our contestants in terms of early submissions? And I am not seeing any. Nope, none. We have had, I think there was like one episode where somebody made a submission like literal, like seconds. It was, it was Ethan. It was, yeah, was it Ethan? I think it was <laughs> Ethan. He made it in like, it, it was yeah. seconds after, it was like, 17 seconds after 9.30, right? Yes, yeah, incredible. Uh, like, so I did want to wait until it was officially 9.31, um, and I can refresh, and I don't I don't see any of our contestants. You know, eventually they're going to kind of, like, catch on, and, you know, contestants watch. They know that we do this prediction every night. But in any case, uh, <laughs> none of them made a submission, so um, I will choose the outcome no, which 43% of chat chose. So we actually had more folks choosing yes. Um, we were wrong. The answer was no. Wow. Doubters. The doubters rejoice tonight. You, Rob, is going off with Viz tonight. We've got uh, percentage home run or inning. Home runs are slightly less likely later in the game. See, I'm learning more things about about baseball right now. That's good. Is well, it? Yeah, of course. Baseball, you know, it's it's a it's a great sport. It's heavily invested in statistics. Oh, we see a radial plot now. From 
Michael Malarkey. He is going for quantity and quality tonight in terms of data viz. I wonder how this is going to help him in terms of modeling. I think he might be trying a new strategy, Meg. Yeah. Uh, very, very cool. This is the second um, uh, co po polar coordinates plot that we've seen in Sliced. Um, the first one, incidentally, was from D Rob. That's right. That was plotting literal coordinates. This is a little bit different. That is right. Um, you know, um, like... We've also, Nick, I've got a question from, from Landon that I've received. And since you are the expert on Pi Baseball, he wants to confirm that they can use Pi Baseball because he, he started, then he said he realizes that the target may be in there. So um, The target... Yeah, it, I would say I would say joining on things in terms of the training data set would be fine. But in terms of the test data set, that I I don't know. That that seems that seems hairy to me. But mm. um you know, we have allowed and we we did this before, Meg. We have allowed third-party data. So we can't go back on that. Um, but this is correct. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like in my mind, I would say, um, uh, it, I, I would say he, he'd have to confirm with me. I'll, I'll make the choice there, but, uh, I'm leaning towards more no than yes, just because oh. I think he could, I, because the target is close, right? Like, okay, so I will let him know no. Yeah, I would say I would say more no than yes, but confirm. Like I would say like there might be things in the data set that are fine. Like for instance, if he just wants to get like player age or player height or like information about parks or something, all that stuff is probably fine. Yeah. But like Okay. Um I would probably suggest to him like um Try working with the data set as is right now. Yeah. Because he should be able to do everything with the data set as is. Okay, I'm letting him know. Land and pushing the boundaries. Yeah, after starting coding 10 minutes early. <laughs> You see uh, D-Rob with a balls and strikes plot. Remember, uh, in baseball, three strikes and you're out, uh, four balls, and you earn what's called a base, a base on balls, or uh, more colloquially known as a, as a walk. And um, it's a home ball. Yes. And so uh, in this case, he's seeing home runs on 3-0 uh, counts, three balls, zero strikes. There tends to be a high percentage. Interesting. Uh, zero ball. Wait, what is three, the percentage? Three, three balls. balls and zero strikes. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah, dramatic. Um, lots of data viz. You know, I, I will say, Meg, um, yeah. one thing that I really wanted to see from, from this data set was actually a ton of data viz. This is cool. Then, this, yeah. are you are you pretty pleased? I'm very pleased right now because of the, like we're seeing two people go straight into the data viz part of this entire thing, and uh, unsure where Michael stands in terms of modeling. I know D Rob. We've all been very confident in D Rob's ability to model, so perhaps D Rob is uh, uh, setting his own pace. He knows what he's going to do with the modeling side of things, investing a lot of time already into. Uh, uh, data viz first and, and to be honest I do think uh, there's a lot of points to be gained here in terms of data viz so uh, D-Rob yeah. and Michael right now with I think it's really those th those two that are like entering the data viz face off in this in this episode tonight that's right we do see um, we do see Jordan we had we saw Jordan we saw him plot a few different things in more of like an exploratory manner uh, mm -hmm. And we do see him picking up uh, some modeling stuff now. So he uh, has done his exploration, and now we're diving in to some modeling. We do see another plot from uh, 
Michael Malarkey here, and this is Launch Angle. I was telling you about this, Meg. Um, yeah, you were. This is this is a Launch Angle plot. So, as you can imagine, in order to get the baseball over the fence, in order to make it count as a home run, it needs to be coming off the bat at a particular angle as well as a particular speed. And so we see him plotting here, uh, speed on the x-axis, and the launch angle on the y-axis. And this kind of gives you this idea of like how fast the ball needs to be going and also mm-hmm. the the angle as to which it needs to be going uh, in order to, to, to get a home run. Yeah, that looks good. Like, I, I like this plot. Like, I kind of want to, like... Actually, like kind of delicious. I don't know. <laughs> does, it, 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 does it look tasty, Meg? Yeah, it does. Tasty data viz. Yeah, there's some yummy, yummy data viz tonight. I do agree. I do agree. I did see some stuff on D Rob's screen. I, uh, uh, his stream over to me is uh, a little laggy, but uh, maybe this is a good moment for all of us to take a look at a couple things. One, um, I did find this cholera plot. Uh, oh, nice. Is this, is this um, what everyone was talking about? Is this the plot? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I just want lots of like black lines and red dots like <laughs> my arm. I don't know. <laughs> and we do see um, in terms of count, uh, we have height and average distance from the center in terms of feet. So this is, again, pl- oh. uh, uh, across the plate. Uh, so where pitches are going based off count and then whether or not they're home run pitches. Um, so interesting data viz, again, diving pretty deep into this like three-way interaction uh, for for uh, for D-Rob. And um, I do want to let everyone know, uh, if I am not mistaken, Um, how do I click? How, how do I click? Oh, here is how I click. Oh, God. I'm so curious what's about to happen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, D-Rob is also streaming over ah, on yes. YouTube. So uh, if you are so interested, so inclined to watch D-Rob's perspective, uh, feel free to jump over to YouTube and uh, watch him over there as well. He's also doing some live commentary. Um, and let's take, a, let's take a listen to how it sounds like. Ball position, center plate. Yeah, let's do it. Plate, plate up, this is... Such a furious typer. You know, Vila, I just noticed that, like, back center... Can we tell what kind of zero keyboard he has? Here. It just sounds... It sounds very, like... It sounds like glass. So, like... It sounds fragile. Yeah, it does. Like, it sounds, like, almost like just, like, a... It's like, a, a, like a Mac Percent keyboard. It doesn't sound... It doesn't, to me, sound like a mechanical keyboard. <laughs> Craig's asking, are they cherry reds? Well, let me tell you. Mm. Um, the, Speaking of... Yeah. <laughs> they might not be. But um, you do have an opportunity to win a keyboard that does have some Mavericks cherries in them. Uh, and uh, that does remind me to bring up the hashtag giveaway promo we're doing. Meg, you want to tell them a little about the... Yes, I would love to. And it's so funny because I I was kind of just like literally just tweeting right now as you were trying to pull up D Rob's stream. So extremely apt for me to to talk about our very first hashtag slice Twitter giveaway. Uh, That's thanks to our new supporter Z by HP. Uh, So this is, you know, all you have to do to participate is use our hashtag hashtag sliced uh, on Twitter. Anytime now um, and between now and next week, so August 3rd, the playoff episode next week, for a chance to win an HP Omen gaming bundle. And so like Nick said, that comes with the Omen encoder keyboard with uh, uh, um, you'll also get the Omen vector mouse, uh, Omen vector mouse 
no, sorry, Omen Mouse Pad 300 and an Omen Blast headset. Um, so yeah, tweet, tell us, I mean, share some cool stuff that you've created as part of Sliced. I've seen a lot of like cool like blog posts and people doing stuff with, um, you know, the data in between episodes or even, you know, sometimes during the episodes. Um, just share that you're watching Sliced and, you know, you uh, think it would be cool if your Twitter followers would watch it too. Um, uh, if you compete alongside our contestants on the Kaggle leaderboard, uh, you know, share that, share screenshots, whatever, you know, just um, use the hashtag and we will be doing the winner selection next week during our August 3rd playoff episode. So yeah, thank you Z by HP for the HP gaming bundle. Super excited to give that away to one of you. There's some weird stuff in there. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might be muted again, is what I'm hearing from chat. Is Oh, that's right. <laughs> Lol. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I love this function memes. Hey, girl. I, um... you... <laughs> <laughs> as he, he, he does it as he looks at the note column. Notes column, that's great. Yeah. Um, just real quick, uh, check out Z by HP. Uh, HP.com slash data science... And uh, yeah, definitely use that hashtag if you want a chance to uh, uh, get a keyboard, a mouse, a headset, and a uh, mount, yeah, mouse pad. It's like a gigantic, you know, you know the yeah. mouse pad. I'm talking. It's like a gamer mouse pad. Yeah, like what does that? What does that mean? Is it like Mountain Dew stain res resistant? Like Cheeto stain <laughs> resistant? Like what is what is a gamer mouse pad? <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i'll take that as a guess <laughs> <laughs> we are on um jordan's screen jordan wilheim taking a look at feature importance from his xg boost model um he has typed some notes here higher the launch angle the better chance it has to be the home run the faster it is the better chance to be a home run both of those would be correct theories based off of Michael Malarkey's data viz, which we saw. We saw him plot home run by uh, launch angle and uh, exit speed. So he did that as his XY, but he hasn't done pitch location yet. Correct? He has not. So he has okay. yet to find that. Um, and he has yet to uh, group by park. Uh, Jordan was really close, but he only did it in a visualization. I think we're about to see it from Michael Malarkey. You can tell, like, when I lean in, like, I'm looking at... I'm trying to read their code on my smaller screen, and it looks like he may be about to plot our, our golden feature. I do see Oops. Aesthetic by <laughs> X-axis, but we need Aesthetic by Z. Ooh, yeah. Oh, never mind. Okay, so it's just left and right of... Okay, almost. So. It's very close. Uh, very. Automatic golden feature? Automatic golden feature. The famed ice cube plot. I don't know. I don't know what that means, I'll be honest. <laughs> I'm sure as well. And here we are with Landon. Landon uh, going into his own package he maintains, Bonsai. Uh, oh, cool. Anyone here, if you're interested in uh, uh, Bayesian optimization grid searching uh feel free to check out bonsai his package and looks like he is about to uh tune through the model 
So we are in the two. He's, I think he's finding his groove now. He was a little like you know slow to find his step. You know this episode so far, but yeah, yeah, he's yeah, he's, he's getting he's getting. We're we're seeing our Landon. He's back. That is right. And uh, speaking of Landon, uh, let's uh, hear from Landon while he tunes this model. Let's do it. Hi guys, my name is Landon Buechner. I'm from Houston, Texas. I uh, recently graduated from Texas A&M with a degree in applied mathematics and a minor in statistics. I'm really confident about designing samplers. If we're gonna do some focus on Bayesian, I'll whip around some PyMC3. I'm also really familiar with Gaussian processes. Uh, in my senior capstone project, I did time series modeling with Gaussian processes and I'm really comfortable with that. As most data scientists probably know, coffee is the key to clean code, clear mind, I def I've had a French press before and I thought I was pretty cool back then. At the same time, you could catch me going to Starbucks, spending way too much money on terrible coffee. I'm not that much of a snob when it comes to coffee. Whatever whatever gets me caffeinated, I'm happy with. In the pilot season for Sliced, I thought I was prepared going into it. This time I'm gonna be coming in hot with a couple of models in my quiver. I've got SQLearn, maybe throwing a neural network if I have the chance, coming in strong this time. And uh, what else do we know about Landon, Meg? Um, I, I first got to say, like, watching that video of Landon's for the third time now, after, like, thinking about, you know, how he did in our pilot season, which admittedly was not great, like, oh my god, he's come so far. <laughs> um, it's, it's just outstanding. So the first thing we have to, again, say about Landon, if you missed it at the beginning of the episode, is that um, he is uh, no longer on the job market. He is a fully employed data scientist. So congrats to Landon. Um, and he has, you know, obviously he's also, you know, in the regular season, our number one points getter, uh, top of the leaderboard. So he has, uh, he's definitely, you know, if we had a most improved uh, award for Sliced, I think Landon, Landon would, it would be Landon's. Um, but yeah, I wanted to also share with you a little bit uh, about my pre-show Q&A conversation with Landon. So I had the same set of questions for Landon um, about, uh, you know, first, what was his favorite Summer Olympic sport? His favorite Summer Olympic sport is surfing. Uh, there was one other contestant who chose a, a new sport at this year's uh, Olympics. Um, and I believe surfing is is also a new sport uh, for the Summer Olympics too. So I guess he's been checking that out. Um, I asked Landon uh, the fabled question, is a hot dog a sandwich? And I thought it was so interesting. All of our contestants had different answers to this. Um, and Landon's answer, how can you have different answers to a binary question, right? <laughs> You've got four answers to a yes, no question. Um, I love it. Uh, so, uh, Landon thinks that a hot dog is, or no, say it's a, he says it's a taco. It's, he says it's a type of taco. So, a hot dog is a is a taco. Um, and I guess we'll have to, <laughs> uh, if he makes it to the finals, if he makes it to the championships, maybe we'll have another chance to ask Landon um, if he thinks a taco is a sandwich. Um, then there's some sort of like transitive properties there. So we'll have to, we'll, we'll dig into that in future episodes if Landon makes it out of tonight's playoff episode. I did start, um, I did start a poll, Meg, is a hot dog oh. sandwich for <laughs> Yeah, chat. we've got to know. We've got to know. Um, and then, uh, you know, I asked him, you know, what words do you have to share with our viewers of Slice tonight? And he said, uh, the more coffee, the better off you'll be. And... That sounds that strikes me as very on brand from uh, from Landon uh, from what we saw in his uh, contestant video and knowing that unless he's like joking which maybe he is he he is apparently playing slice tonight from a Starbucks. I you know he I think he is honestly doing that. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, I think so too. You know he said he wasn't able to use his headset tonight and so he's kind of checking to make sure that. He wouldn't need a mic or headset. Like, he can't speak or listen wherever he's at. <laughs> like, he needs internet, so. and he needs to be next to coffee at all times, so. Yep. <laughs> that is right. For folks we... for, for folks new to the chat, new to Sliced, feel free to vote 
that is in your chat window you can click this thing at the top and it'll give you this voting option here and remember at the end of the night y'all uh we will have a vote for your favorite contestant and that contestant will get points uh so if you want to practice voting now is a great time to exercise your right in this chat to vote i just voted nick and it was so easy <laughs> did you did, yeah what, did, did you what did you say did you say yes or no oh i i kept my answer i i voted yes oh it is a Which so far so far chat is not with me on that one no no that is oh, well, it was close though it was close 55 well, it was to close 45. 55 to 45 there uh we do see uh, in terms of the leaderboard, a lot of other folks submitting already. Thank you to everyone helping out and participating along. Uh, we see a handful of names, uh, a few of them, uh, very familiar with them. Be Stuttered, I believe he won yeah. uh, one of the, the nights. And Max Bolger, I believe uh, we've seen his name a few different times on, uh, on Sliced. And Greg, oh, which we've seen in uh, chat now a few new time a few times now too so uh, feel free to submit y'all uh take the data set try to predict home runs and uh see what see what you end up getting um if you if you get first place you will win kaggle swag and the nvidia deep learning institute course code redemption token thing <laughs> that's right um, Thank you to NVIDIA for supplying some Deep Learning Institute uh, course codes. And thank you, uh, Kaggle, for the swaggle. That's right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Kaggle. <laughs> I think it goes on my corporate credit card. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nearing the one hour point here, y'all. How's it ever, how's it going in chat? Yeah. How's it going in chat, y'all? Is everyone having a good time? Everyone enjoying the playoffs? Everyone enjoying the playoffs? We're on D Rob's screen right now, and uh, I believe, last but not least, we should probably take a listen to D Rob himself. So, uh, let's hear from D Rob. I'm Dave Robinson. I'm principal data scientist at Heap. I've been working in data science for about six years. And before that, I did my PhD at Princeton in computational biology. I've been using R for 10 years. I've been using the tidyverse since uh, before it was called that. It's a set of tools that I really like and I really enjoy. I think a tool is really powerful in terms of how it shapes our thinking, in terms of how it shapes the way we solve problems. Outside of data science, I, my favorite thing to do is spend time with my son, Ben. He's only 15 months old, but he's a, he's a, a real treat. And he, uh, so he's not quite old enough yet to be rooting for me, uh, but he's almost old enough, I think, to be learning ggplot2. So I'm planning to start him on that uh, sometime really soon. I hope that people root for me because I'm not here to win. I'm here to learn and I'm here to share. I've run a couple of marathons and there's a saying in racing where you say, don't try anything new on race day. So my hope is that I'm trying lots of new things while I'm practicing and drilling myself for slice so that on race day, I'm just ready to execute. And uh, what did we learn about D-Rob today, Meg? Yeah, so um, again, of course, I asked D-Rob the same set of questions before the show uh, got started tonight. And so I asked him, you know, what's your favorite summer Olympic sport? And if you know that this is a summer Olympic sport, you can probably guess that it's his favorite. Uh, it's the marathon. The marathon is D-Rob's, David Robinson's. Favorite summer Olympic sport. We just heard him talk about how he runs marathons and how he thinks about uh, the similarities between marathon running and um, being a competitive live coder for our <laughs> data science game show on Twitch. <laughs> uh, so marathons is, you know, that's his favorite summer Olympic sport. I totally forgot that that's a summer Olympic sport. I don't know why I asked this question. I don't even watch the Olympics, but it's all right. <laughs> uh, sports related be fun. Um, and is a, is a hot dog a sandwich? Um, he says, again, couldn't answer a yes, no question. 
He says that that it's personal. <laughs> so I think he he's <laughs> he's either demurring, like he's saying, "No, I, I don't want you to know the I I don't want you to know what I think about this question." He's either saying that sense of it's personal, or he's saying it's just sort of like a matter of perspective. Mm. Uh, it's it's a uh, it's whatever you personally think. Um, you can call it a you can call it a sandwich, Nick, and. No, I can call it, you know, not a sandwich, and that's okay. Um, so, I don't know. I don't know what in what sense uh, D Rob D Rob really meant that, but uh, apparently it's personal. So, um, then finally, I asked him uh, if he had any words for our slice viewers tonight, and he said, and I quote, "Beware that when competing with memers, you do not you do not become a memer, for if you gaze into a meme." The meme gazes into you. <laughs> what? So. <laughs> so he's a he's a he's doing a little bit of riffing on this Nietzsche quote, um, which I love, which I love because I think it lends, like, kind of like another lens on which we can interpret his hot dog sandwich question, because Nietzsche also said there are no facts, only interpretations. Um, which, you know, I think is a little bit how he answered the hot dog sandwich question when he said it's personal. So, uh, <laughs> wow. Uh, D-Rob, uh, both a fierce competitor and also apparently a, a, a fierce philosophical thinker. Uh, Tony, if that quote's going to go in the YouTube cut, do you want me to do another take or... <laughs> <laughs> um that's d rob uh we do see jordan mag jordan is about to get himself 10 points here Ooh la la. and uh surely he won't leave it just like this yeah he needs uh he needs one more thing here imagine if like the strike zone really was like that shape <laughs> i you know this would and there it is there you have it meg um nice yeah nice all right. Wow. Jordan, uh, with some data viz, and I think while this was happening, we actually did see Landon um, uh, put not a data viz up, but a submission. And nice. And it is to no one's surprise that Landon... Oh, wait. But we also have Landon plotting pitch location by Israel. He does! Home run. He just did! Oh by my god! And, and hewed by home run! No way! Wow! That's another 10! Uh, and that's wow. Landon's... Okay. I think this is Landon's first data viz as well, so... Um, yeah! We are seeing Landon. He has a lot to do if he wants to start catching up to Michael Malarkey and D-Rob in terms of data viz, but at the very least, uh, he'll be... He'll be happy to... He'll be happy to find out that he is not 20 points behind uh, at the moment, he is 10 points behind in terms of data viz points. Uh, um, D-Rob with 20 points, finding both um, golden features already. Uh, and this is actually, I believe, for Jordan, the first golden feature he's ever discovered in Slice Season 1. And I'm just checking to see if the same is true for Landon. Uh, no, so Landon has discovered golden features in the past, so, uh, but for, for Jordan, that was his first golden feature ever, so, cool. Uh, I'm, I'm sure he'll be very happy to know that, and he is right now plotting, uh, plate X, plate Z by, uh, pitch type, uh, which is an interesting cut. That actually was a, a, a B-side golden feature, right, Meg? <laughs> a B-side golden feature, yes, that's right. <laughs> What's a fork fork ball? That um, sounds like something from uh, the Good Place. <laughs> yeah, a, a fork ball. It's it's a uh, well. Clearly, there's not a lot of them. Uh, but uh, uh, I I'm, I'm not going to speak out of turn as if I know what a fork ball is. I really okay. should. Okay. Yeah, and I have an what? idea on, as to Nick. what it is. I have an idea, but uh, I, I'd rather not be wrong 
in front of 102 people tonight. That's but that's a strategy. You you you're wrong, and then chat. Oh. The people on the internet correct you. But but okay okay. Let me try it. Let me try it. Let me try yes it. Okay. yes. Go for it. Go for it. <laughs> a fork ball is a pitch type. The pitcher throws two balls, and they each curve different. You know, they 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 curve away from each other. Yeah. Yeah, so two balls, they just kind of like... <laughs> okay, let's see. <laughs> oh, um, apparently I was right. No one's correcting me. <laughs> One in each hand. Yep. <laughs> no one's corrected me, so... I guess that was right. Wow, I mean, I thought that was pretty unlikely to be true, but... Okay. No one on the internet is correcting me. Well, so. we do see Jordan. Ooh. We do see that. That's how the internet reacts for real. That is actually how the internet would react, unfortunately, in a dark, <laughs> in a dark, twisted way. Doctor yeah. Gregory Matthews. Uh, we, yeah, the very true in Blaze Ball. This is yeah, right, exactly. Which <laughs> I think baseball could learn a thing or two from Blaze Ball. <laughs> Practicing to be wrong and gets it right. There you go. Thanks, Raj. <laughs> Uh, some shout outs in chat, y'all. Thanks for the bits, Sri. Thanks for the bits, Load Screen. Uh, and thanks for the subs, y'all. Thanks, uh, uh, Raj, for the five months. And uh, and Stats in the Wild, that's Greg. Uh, thanks for the four months. And uh, if you out there are interested in supporting the stream, that money does go uh, to back to the stream and the community that we have growing here. Uh, it goes back to the students and people looking... Uh, for jobs, uh, if they can't find their way to conferences because uh, uh, travel's expensive, hotel fees may be expensive, uh, conference fees may be expensive, uh, I typically tend to gift um, the uh, the subscription money back to folks who are who uh, may may need a, a helping hand to get to where they need to. Uh, and thanks for the freaking. Five gifted, Craig. That is incredible. Thanks, dude. Um, I use it for good things. Yeah, I do. <laughs> um, so, uh, also, the benefits for y'all, uh, if you are interested in following along, sliced every Tuesday, and you want an ad-free experience, uh, subscribing to the channel will get you an ad-free experience. Uh, so feel free to subscribe. And if you do have... Uh, Amazon Prime, you can link your Amazon Prime account with your Twitch account, and sitting there, if you have Amazon Prime, uh, awaits a, a Twitch Prime subscription you can use on this channel or any channel on Twitch. Um, we are uh, in the final hour here. Lots of data viz tonight, Meg. How, 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 do you, how do you feel about that? I'm really enjoying it. Um... Because I, I feel like, you know, there are data visualizations where I feel like I am actually kind of like learning about the data set about baseball, which is cool. So I'm into it. I'm into it. I am also enjoying a ton of, uh, a ton of data viz tonight. It is very fun. Um, and I hope everyone out there is also enjoying it. Um, including all the people who are on the leaderboard. Uh, that also includes uh, our contestant, um, Landon. Oh, Landon. Who is Very nice. Near the top of the public leaderboard, we see Professor <gasps> Bottle Services student also up there. And we do see um, Laster than last place, Larry. Trying to make their way to the bottom there. So we'll see if that ends up happening. Very uh, nice. Feel free to um, get access to the data, y'all. Exclamation data. Uh, if you want to take a look at it and play along. We do love last place, Larry. <laughs> D-Rub looks like he is, is D-Rub's connection a little goofy for you, Meg. Uh, let me check things out. Um, I do see that they're having some uh, connectivity problems. It looks okay to me, though, to be honest. It looks all right. Okay. Yeah. Is this like the the streamer's kind of dilemma? Because we know and we know that he's he's also streaming this to his YouTube. We... I don't know if that's um. 
And he, he did have a, a little bit of like a internet kind of like blip right as we got started. So yeah. he, he could be having a few problems. Um, it might be on my end as well. So maybe I'll... I'm, I am able to at least see his screen, but I see that it's still loading for you. Yeah. Um, well, that's fine. It's okay. We're, we're going to get like a huge studio for sliced. We're going to relocate to, to Hollywood, California. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, I wish. Uh, um, never have these problems. Okay. And I got D-Rob back. Sweet. Cool. And it looks like he is training his model. Uh, he is uh, tuning down that XG boost. Uh, and it was really interesting to see him talk a little about uh, his experience on Sliced. Again, he didn't know if he was making it to the playoffs. Uh, but uh, over the course of Sliced, both on his competition days and uh, on his uh, just hanging out days in, on Tuesdays, um, he wrote a lot about Sliced and talked about modeling, talked about uh, competitive modeling, and talked all sorts of things. Uh, so if you're interested in all of that, uh, check out David Robinson's blog and, uh, uh, and his Twitter, where he posts all sorts of different summaries about his blog posts. And memes now. He posts a lot of memes now. I wonder if it'll be like a habit that he sticks with, you know, post slice. Like, is he a memer now? Like, I, has this been enough to change David Robinson? I, you know, if, if there is something, if there are two things that I'll be very proud of, one will be everyone getting jobs, everyone who has had job opportunities or, or, or some sort of opportunity because of slice. That's like one with a star next to it. But two, I think D-Rob taking on a new internet meme persona might mm -hmm. be might be my next like very proud thing that came out of Sliced. So It's getting to a point where it's like hard to choose, you know, like what's most exciting <laughs> that we've seen from the community. Um, you know, Nick, you and I talked about it a little bit in the interview that we did with Towards Data Science, like the things that surprised us. And, you know, I, I think to sum it up, it's like, it's the community. <laughs> um, the community that's been like most surprising and exciting. Um, so, yeah, we, it's been great. We see Landon. Um, it looks like he is doing some cat boost pooling now. So, uh, I, you know, to be honest, I haven't seen him do any pooling in his modeling before. So I wonder uh, how that's going to work out for him, uh, trying a new mm -hmm. layer in his modeling technique in his ensemble here. Uh, we see D-Rob looking at feature importance. And uh, feature importance in this case is exactly what you would imagine. The physics are helping determine uh, the whether or not a home run will, will make it out of the park. And... Uh, where there isn't physics, where there where the physics may be missing, uh, the launch angle, the launch velocity, you did see um, some of the more categorical features uh, mm -hmm. uh, take take over. Uh, so so we are seeing sort of uh, the the projectile motion side of this coming to life through feature importance here uh, on D Rob's screen. We see over on Jordan's screen, uh, what this. Okay, uh, let's see if I could uh, uh, do this in a way. I'm also having problems loading loading screens. Uh, it kind of like, it's a little, I don't know if it's like a Discord issue oh, that we're, we, we may be having. All right, so Jordan here, uh, he was working on modeling and it looks like uh, he is, it looked like he actually went through some sort of modeling selection um, I'm not sure if he used some sort of like built-in auto ML technique or some sort of auto ML technique to uh, choose the best modeling type, uh, but he is using a modeling type that I haven't seen him use before. And we also see him using, I guess he's just stacking models together. Um, so he has an actually boost model going through into a logistic regression. Um, we'll see how this works. So he is truly making a pipeline of an, of a, an ensembled model um i i wonder how this is gonna work out i uh i feel like uh this this uh 
this might be pretty interesting because I haven't I haven't seen this from Jordan before either. Going over to Michael Malarkey's screen here, and uh, Michael is also working on his modeling now that we are uh, nearing 45 minutes left to go. And it looks like he does have predictions already. You can see here yep. um, some sort of uh, percent, perhaps, uh, probability of a home run. Uh, and the and uh, the ball in play ID, which is a unique ID that we've created for uh, for this competition. Uh, this looks like he's ready to submit. I'm w I would be assuming that he is submitting this up onto the the leaderboard. I don't see his name quite yet on the leaderboard, but surely enough that is coming. Here we are with D Rob. Uh, back to the Wow Pikachu meme. So. Uh, um, I'm, I, I, I don't know where in the workflow he's putting this. Like, is he, like, making time to meme? Or is this, like, during a model tune on a different session? Or, like, <laughs> where exactly is D-Rob fitting in the memes in his, uh, in his workflow now? I, I'm not entirely sure. I mean, I, I think... He's he's not doing like I think we saw Greg do I believe which was like live meme, and and Greg won, which, and Greg won paid off so he certainly watched Greg live meme. I don't think he's live memeing though. I think he's kind of like pre, he's pre uh, curated his memes, which you know if you're new to memeing like D Rob is is you know probably don't want to get too aggressive with it and try to like live live meme. Um, but, uh, yeah, and I think, uh, I should also say, I think Tony was also a live memer. Did we see any live memeing from Jesse? I... D-Rob's gonna hate that we're just, like, commentating about memes right now. He's gonna be like, oh my god, it's working. Uh, like, he didn't want it to work. He didn't want it to work. <laughs> <laughs> Going over to Jordan's screen. It looks like Jordan is doing some one-hot encoding for the home team. Uh, remember home team uh that's that, that also is synonymous with the park they're playing in um so if you were playing in uh against san francisco for example you are also playing at oracle park in san francisco uh you are at their home stadium so uh this would be a proxy for uh the different park types that that perhaps they're playing in and maybe he's trying to get some sort of uh a feature out of this that isn't necessarily all multi-label, everything in one column. Maybe there's a little more uh, juice to be squeezed if you one hot encoded um, that column. Back over to D-Rob, and we see D-Rob um, tuning down his model and also a different visualization, which I didn't quite catch. Um, oh, like the word knuckle. I don't know if that helps you. Uh, knuckle sandwich. Is, yeah, okay. <laughs> Is that a uh, kind of sandwich? It is. It, 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 maybe it's a hot dog. <laughs> it's a taco. When was, when was the last time you went to a baseball game, Meg? <laughs> last Thursday. You went. You. <laughs> yeah, I saw. I saw the Dodgers play the Giants. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it was. Yeah. It was recent. Wow. Yeah, it was recent. Yeah, and I, I saw a Twins game in May or early June. Must have been May. It was right before Sliced. Wow, wow. I, um, yeah. you know, the last time I saw a baseball game was well over a year ago, and it was in Arizona during spring training. Wow, damn. Yeah. That was that was uh, a long time ago, but I totally understand why, <laughs> yeah. why it's been a while. That is right. Yeah. Uh, the last time I saw a baseball game, I believe it was, uh, I believe it was Cleveland versus the reds which makes sense because we share uh spring training oh. a spring training park and yeah. um and the the day after we got uh we were told like go back home there's a pandemic happening go back home <laughs> you know nick i've actually been to a spring training game in arizona you have yeah i have oh what when 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 and where um, it was maybe like three or four years ago, and is there a park in Peoria? Probably. Maybe? And it was the Mariners. Okay. 
and someone else. That's all I remember. Uh, we yep. see there we, go. <laughs> we see linear weight plot here from uh, from Jordan. He's using a linear he's using a linear model in the end, and so he uh, you could use linear weights as somewhat of a proxy in in terms of a uh, feature importance, but really in order to get a true quote unquote feature importance out of linear weights, you would have to uh, normalize or standardize your units. And I'm unsure if he did that with launch speed uh, and all these other features. So uh, it's hard to know whether or not uh, this is truly feature importance or if this is uh, uh, something else uh, and we're just seeing a, a launch speed taking over or consuming most of the model since the harder you hit it, the further it goes. That makes sense to me. That seems pretty intuitive. <laughs> Believe it or not, the harder you hit it, the further it goes. Let's go over to Michael Malarkey's screen. Uh, again, using this uh, custom palette that he's mm. built up and is like building around. We've seen him on Twitter doing a lot of this. And uh, it looks like this is feature importance. And again, he's getting similar stuff to what um, uh, D-Rob did. And he also actually parsed out his batted ball type in a, almost the exact same way D-Rob did. So you see ground ball and fly ball as their own features. Um, that particular column of batted ball type, uh, you have ground ball, fly balls, pop flies, uh, line drives, all these different uh, batted ball types, descriptive information about how the, how the ball is traveling. Um, it looks like they've maybe a one hot encoded for that. Uh, and we're seeing a launch angle, launch speed, and the the type of fly ball, um, the type of uh, uh, ball traveling description as a uh, as important features in these models. So it's very cool. it's very possible, Meg, that Michael Malarkey and D Rob will have very 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 similar model outputs because yeah. they may be transforming the data in very similar ways. That's really that's really interesting, and I I also want to jump in to say i'm glad that you can see what they're doing i i as of now cannot see any anything from any of the contestants in discord so just a heads up oh maybe uh and have you there's a are you, there's a way to fix that have you tried turn, also, turning it on and off again is that a like do i have to like leave discord and come back i did i literally did that <laughs> oh wow okay all right well i just closed the the share the share the video share screen thing we do see um, Landon checking out the leaderboard. He is looking at his entry on the leaderboard right now, um, wondering if this also indicates him putting up his next entry. We also see on his screen a few names from chat and also uh, Michael Malarkey on there. Uh, so we do see Michael with a submission six minutes ago. Very cool. Um, let's go back over D-Rob, y'all. Chat, how's it going? 40 minutes left. Do you feel the playoff vibes? Do you feel like... I just want everyone to know that tonight is not so similar to the previous nights. Obviously, a lot of it is the same. They're still doing similar things. But um, a few things have changed in the playoffs. Um... All of the scores have reset, and really, the points that they earned tonight only count towards tonight. So the top two contestants from tonight, the top two point getters, move on to the semifinals, while the other two will be saying goodbye to them tonight. Their playoff journey will end tonight. So uh, that will be the format all the way up into the finals. So the top two from each round will go. Uh, into the next round, all the way until we get down to two contestants only, and that will be that final week. Uh, so, if it wasn't clear before, y'all, um, it is very clear now. Remember, your vote does count, not just towards points tonight, but perhaps playoff livelihood as we advance through Slice first playoffs, sliced season one playoffs. Super exciting. Very wild. And we see, um, looks like um, Jordan is still messing around with some data viz. Um, 
as from from Jordan. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm loving the the deep dive into it. Um, yeah. So haven't seen him put anything on the leaderboard quite yet, but um, uh, hopefully we start seeing him throw his hat into the ring soon enough. Um, Sixteen people with submissions tonight. Uh, I wonder how many more we'll get in the following uh, less than 40 minutes to go. Hopefully a lot. We saw, I think, we've had two weeks of over 30 people on the Kaggle leaderboard. At least two weeks. Maybe more. Very exciting. We do, So it looks like uh, it looks like um, Jordan is getting ready to put up his first submission. He might not be too happy if he's looking over at the leaderboard and looking at his log loss currently. I, I also see just a comment that just says gross. Uh, <laughs> I guess, he, you know, on competitive live coding data science, you've got two hours, you got to be efficient with your comments. Keep it to one word where you can. That's gross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe uh, Jordan Wilhelm is not enjoying uh, this particular data set as much as he has before. He has uh, done really well in modeling both of his weeks, um, coming in first place, I believe, in both weeks that he, he uh, participated in. So, How did we, uh, the holdout set for this data set remind me, Nick? How did we land on it? Yeah, or no, no, what what is it? What 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 is the what's the holdout? Uh, the the holdout is twenty twenty one. So, oh, nice. So nice. they have all of twenty twenty, which was a truncated season. They only played mm -hmm. uh, uh, a handful of weeks of the regular season. Uh, we're about um, halfway or a little over halfway through uh, the regular season of twenty twenty one. If you do take a look at the data, you'll see that the most recent games that we have represented in the test set is uh, from yesterday. So uh, the data is very fresh. It is uh, um, fresh. Yes. Cool. Hot out the oven. So So it has the data from the game I was at on Thursday. It will have the game from the data you were at Thursday, yes. Nice. Absolutely. Uh, we see uh, land in here with his uh, tuning through bonsai and it looks like um, uh, You know, it's so interesting seeing both Landon doing something that is completely OP this entire season uh, mm -hmm. Bayesian optimi optimized grid search and Also him kind of battling with it. I think he's kind of lost in terms of his parameter set uh, last time he uh, competed which was actually last week uh, it seemed like he only submitted one uh, submission, and then he didn't have another submission until, like, the last second. But um, uh, he was very comfortable in terms of modeling. I think I'm getting a vibe here with the way he's kind of scrolling through his code and checking his uh, uh, model metrics that he might not necessarily be as comfortable tonight. Yeah. I, I do think it's really cool that, you know, he's using this package, he developed Bonsai. Um, you know, one of the things that I think would be cool is if, you know, you know others are using his package, Bonsai. What if we saw Bonsai used in, like, an actual, like, featured Kaggle competition? You know, Kaggle is also, like, competitive in its own right. It's a kind of like a sport, and we see, like, metas on Kaggle, like XG Boost really took hold on Kaggle. Keras took hold on Kaggle in the early days of each of those libraries. What if, what if, what if Bonsai is the next XG boost? That would be kind of incredible, right? I mean, I just love rooting, rooting for all of our, our contestants. Oh so. yes. Oh yes. I am with yeah. you there. Inside and outside of Sliced, so. We see D-Rob. It looks like D-Rob's getting ready to upload. He has uploaded his submission and uh, this is his first submission he's putting up there, uh, about uh, 33 minutes to go, and but, wow, what a score. D-Rob, oh goodness. 
Wow. Ooh, but look at this. He's right. He's landed. landed. Right, he's landed. It's like, oh, man, it's incredible. He's right. He's, okay. What was I saying? What was I saying? They're always within a hair of each other. Look, look at this, um, chat. Look at this, okay? This isn't just under Landon. This is Landon with a Landon with a log loss of 0. 0.07207 and D-Rob with 0. 0.07236. This is so, so tiny. You so, could just imagine, so like, Nick reading those scores off in the final judging section, like, taking, like, two minutes just to read that <laughs> score. It's that close. Uh, <laughs> this is why this is why I wanted to see D-Rob and Landon in the same episode in the playoffs. So it's pretty exciting to see. Um, I will also remind folks, because we haven't done that yet this episode, that the public leaderboard is just 1% of the test data. Um, so really, we could see shakeup, and we've seen shakeup in past weeks when we take a look at the private leaderboard at the end of the show, because that is where their scores are evaluated on the remaining 99% of the test data set. But impressive nonetheless, but uh, yeah. We are seeing Jordan just inspecting the leaderboard. I think he's just using this as an indication of how good his model is. He doesn't want to put anything up there until... Uh, uh, he Oh, it looks like he did put something up there, but uh, there was an error in, I'm guessing, the column names, perhaps. Mm. Uh, oh, it's the index. Yes, we had this before. Uh, yeah. I believe Craig Mann uh, manually. Yeah. manually deleted his. Uh, so we've yeah. seen this before, and, and now we see his uh, score up there, and uh, it's also a good one. Uh, Jordan wow. on the board there with a point oh eight. He is in ninth. And remember, shakeups do happen. We've seen as crazy of a shakeup as like twenty places up. 12... I mean, it was like you flipped the leaderboard upside down. Yeah, it was, yeah, absolutely. It was wild. Absolute crazy shakeups. And so, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it's not just super, super close, but also super shaken up tonight at the end. So, uh, it'll be really interesting to see how all of that shakes out. And uh, we see D-Rob doing the regularization here still. Uh, we've seen him do this before. We've seen him, uh, you know, uh, get through and then start training that uh, uh, penalization L1 or L2 parameter. Um, and uh, it looks like we're, we're there again. So he's going to spend probably the next 30 minutes focused on uh, that model tuning side of things. While uh, Jordan, who just put up his first model... Uh, he has something called Weird Sub, which he just changed back to Cat Sub. Uh, perhaps that is a second submission. Intriguing. <laughs> Weird Sub. <laughs> oh, and yeah, he did actually submit it. So that was less than 10 seconds ago. It is also uh, ninth place. So uh, did not necessarily move him up or down the leaderboard. Um, so perhaps oh. very similar modeling techniques that he's using. Land in here, going through his... Uh, uh, tune, and it looks like he's all right. Getting in, he's making a little note to himself for plotting. He might be using the next thirty minutes on just plotting. So we'll see how that looks from Landon's screen. And Michael Malarkey looks like I don't know if this is an R bomb or no. It was not. He's uh, I don't know what he's doing. He's starting a new session. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll see. He. I know he sets his cores to all but one. Um, he runs eight cores on what I believe is a laptop he's working off of, and uh, mm -hmm. we'll see if he's going to split his cores out again. You might see, like, one notebook with three core processing, one no notebook with four core processing. Um, we'll see what he's got going on here. Less than 30 minutes to go for everyone now. Uh, D-Rob's screen patiently waiting for it to load. Um... We do see Jordan with uh, unexpected column again, uh, most likely leaving Oops. that index in there. We'll see. It's interesting. We can see just like little hints of like their their anxiety or the pressure that they feel. You know, whether that's like uh, I'll, I'll his you know markdown comment, gross, weird <laughs> subs, like whatever. <laughs> you know, it's just kind of fun to see just a little peek inside how they're feeling. That's right. Uh, while we're heading into the final stretch here, another shout out to all of our supporters. Uh, thank you, our studio, Streamlit, NVIDIA, 
And uh, Z by HP, check out Z by HP at uh, hp.com slash data science. And uh, speaking of our sponsors, I think it might be time, Meg, for uh, a sponsored giveaway. This is one of my favorite times. Chat. So chat, uh, if you want to participate in our giveaway tonight, all you need to do is be active in chat. Uh, Spam an emote, say hello, uh, do whatever you need to do. Post something in chat, introduce yourself, whatever it might be. And uh, we will give, we'll randomly select one of you to uh, redeem a Deep Learning Institute code from NVIDIA. This is uh, their (coughs) um, uh, form of uh, self-paced courses based around things you can do with uh, GPU accelerated hardware or uh, NVIDIA suite of software. Whatever it might be, lots of different ways to learn over at Deep Learning Institute. Um, So uh, if you are interested in earning uh, one of these through way of random selection, you can do that by just being active in chat. Say hello. Tell us who you're you're cheering for. Tell tell us who you're rooting for. Yeah, you know, Team team D-Rob, Team team, uh, Malarkey. Team Landon, Team Jordan, what might it be? Um, and we'll draw in a few minutes from now. Um, it truly is uh, uh, starting from what looks like scratch. I think he did have an R crash. Ooh, ouch. Yeah. Uh- because he's importing all the packages again. Uh, his code's saved, but it looks like uh, he's got to reload everything. So uh, Michael Malarkey crashing his R session. That is, uh, you know, he's no stranger. We're no strangers to seeing that on this stream. Some folks flying a little close to the sun in terms of their uh, processing. That's what we made this emote emote for. That's... Those session crashes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <sighs> Land in doing some stack overflow hunting here. Yeah, has there been an episode where we haven't seen stack overflow make an appearance? Oh, definitely no. not. I don't think so. Absolutely no. So this is a key part of the data science tool chain. Hey, cool data viz here with um Oh. We have where sp- uh, where particular um pitchers give up home runs. So, That's super interesting. Yeah, so where's the average home run given up for specific pitchers? Really cool data viz from D-Rob. That's neat. Really cool. Meg is in every episode. What is that? What does that mean, Craig? <laughs> Am I an R-bomb? Jordan with... Uh, trying to fix up his model here, uh, accidentally pressed the left key on his keyboard. That is what uh, made all of his cells collapse up. Now he has uh, spidered them out by pressing the right key on there his you keyboard. Go. Uh, <gasps> Google Colab built-in shortcuts, y'all. So... <laughs> Um, we do see him. Looks like he's training another model. He is fitting his cat boost uh, classifier, and it looks like he. I don't know if this is an old error or not, but uh, uh, he keeps hitting something there. We'll check back in with him shortly. D Rob here again, tooting his stuff, and also taking a look at that visualization. Um, really interesting. Where you know percent home runs? Where these pitchers give up the home run? Cool. Yeah, very cool. Oh, yes, Craig, I am a Stack Overflow alum, along with, incidentally, D-Rob, D-Rob. and also Julia. D-Rob and Julia so, and Meg. I actually have a few ex-Stack Overflow employees affiliated with Slice, which is interesting. <laughs> uh, take a look at um, more data viz from 
uh, Michael Malarkey mm. here. Um, you can always tell it's Michael's screen because he has this like uh, like beige background to his data viz and like a particular mm-hmm. font set. Uh, so uh, Orbit Orbitron is that the? Oh wow! Yeah, it's like static magma. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it kind of is. Um, yeah, I, so the I, ice cube plot thing again. <laughs> <laughs> Static magma. Ah, that's a metal band name. Dibs. Dibs on Static Magma. Static Magma. It looks like D Rob has uh, kind of put some finishing touches on his data viz, where a pitcher's throwing, and then we have percent home runs and number of pitches. So, oh, that's size. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you could kind of tell uh, if a particular pitcher is throwing to an area a lot, and then if that is correlating or if that is related to a lot of home runs given up in that area. Wow. That is. Uh... <laughs> is there any? Does that? Ooh, whoa. Any? The, me- the, the memes are gonna be? Just... Oh wait, is he about to live caption this meme? I, I think he was. A, he, that's what it is. The it's... meme caption. The meme package lets me laugh. Can oh he write his God. own package for this? Like, is he? No, he, I think he's <laughs> he, using Memer. I think he's using. Oh, Memer. It's a, it is a. It is, okay, I was like, if he developed a package, I mean, wow. He uh, <laughs> did he just realize this? Did he just... And. Overfit your mo- oh my god, this is amazing. He is live memeing. Oh my god, he he studied Greg's live memeing abilities, and he is now wow. live. He is now live memeing. Wow, there it is. Does this 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 man doesn't doesn't quit? His <laughs> his competitive fire. His competitive Damn. fire is. I, I know that he also studied uh, quite a bit in the school of Jesse. Uh, Jesse's memeing has also been, uh, yeah, much revered by D. Rob, I believe, and and many of us. So. The, uh, we uh, are. Oh. We are. Oh my God! He's about to pull out something with the image. Image uh, magic. Image magic. Yeah. Image magic. Magic. Pe- uh, pe- uh, library. Yeah. This is. Um... We're, Incredible. We're, we're watching something special unfold before we are. Right now. We it are. is the playoffs, you know? You gotta pull out all sorts of crazy things if you wanna find your way to the top. Uh, speaking of finding your way to the top, let's see who's on top in terms of uh, our giveaway. Uh, if you have participated before and you've won before, I unfortunately cannot award you a... Uh, a code so um if your name pops up and uh i'm gonna i gotta cross check it hold on where's my cross checklist if oh, it, <laughs> if, uh, i'm realizing i have to do this for modeling too <laughs> yeah so if your name comes up and you're on the cross checklist we'll just re-roll um but uh but it looks like we're actually okay here it looks like we're okay here so um we're gonna roll now and the person who wins is Ghost Hendrickson. Ghost Woo-hoo. Hendrickson. Uh, Ghost Congratulations, Hendrickson. Ghost Hendrickson. Yes, congrats, Ghost Hendrickson. Um, feel free to uh, reach out to me through uh, through Discord. And uh, yes, congrats, you have earned yourself uh, a Deep Learning Institute token. Uh, so, so congratulations! Reach out through Discord, and I will uh, I'll send that over to you. This isn't your last chance to get uh, Deep Learning Institute tokens, by the way, y'all. Tonight, uh, if you come on f- in first place on the leaderboard tonight, um, and if you haven't won before and you are not a contestant, um, you have an opportunity to get a Deep Learning Institute code and also some Kaggle swag if you are the best non contestant uh, uh, score of the night. So I will beg for one later. <laughs> so congrats, <laughs> Ghost Hendrickson, and we'll see who wins uh, the other one later tonight. But uh, less than 20 minutes to go. Let's take a look at our contestants, y'all. Um, we are here with D Rob. Uh, D Rob looks like he is going through Cat Boost now. Uh, which is something he hasn't uh, 
dabble too much in. He, I, I, I think I saw some tweets of him playing mm-hmm. around with Cat Boost. Uh, we'll see if he uh, uh, can pull out some Cat Boost tonight. Uh, he's already done some XG Boost stuff already. Uh, so uh, perhaps Cat Boost is in, in the pipeline. Let's go over to Jordan Wilhelm. Jordan Wilhelm. Uh, coming off two really strong performances in terms of modeling, uh, looks like he's trying to hammer out some data viz here. Uh, he has a time series plot in terms uh-huh. of pitch type and uh, the amount of times each pitch type has been thrown. Very interesting. Um, in terms of modeling, he did uh, submit some modeling uh, uh, submissions already. Uh, we'll see if those can stand up to, to the likes of uh, Michael, D. Rob, and Landon. Several minutes from now, let's go back over to Landon now. And Landon looks like he is also training through his pooled and ensembled models uh, using Bonsai, his package that he's created for Bayesian optimization grid searching. Um, like his little LOL uh, line comment he's got there after noticing uh, he needed to drop the index column. That's right. Um... So I wonder if he's actually trying to do some sort of imputation. I honestly have... Oh, look at D-Rob here. D-Rob... got more visualization. D-Rob with uh, that same visualization or a similar visualization that uh, Malarkey had earlier in the evening. He has launch angle and launch speed. And we're seeing where the home runs are being hit off of. Uh, So you got to hit it hard and you got to hit it at a particular angle. That gets it over the fence. And uh, the sweet spot for high-speed modern angle that maximizes home runs in the baseball world, uh, there is a term for this, and it's called uh, barreled balls. So, oh wow! Yes, if you if you barrel the ball, or if you barrel the hit, uh, that the barrel there is a sweet spot, as D. Rob is saying, that is the barrel zone, uh, and that uh, at a particular uh, at a particular speed, if you barrel a ball. Uh, it has a high probability of being a home run. I want to see like the 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 hit that was like the seventy launch speed, <laughs> the negative forty five launch angle, straight into the ground. <laughs> yeah, really slowly too. It just kind of like rolled. <laughs> like, I'm just picturing like some like yeah, anyway. Uh, Could be a bunt, you know. Might be like a bunt. Yeah. You know. Oh. Jordan uh, doing a little um, uh, styling, uh, so not just the white grid. He's, he's plotted some gray in the background now. Uh, Michael Malarkey looks like he's fasted some info here. Um, mm. And uh, looks like it's just a histogram looking kind of stuff. Uh, he's trying to see if a pitch type might be correlated with... I got that fork ball, though. The... That's, that's <laughs> true, you know? The, both two in one hand. Two in two hands, right? So, <laughs> um, so he does drop some of the low-end pitches, and he's seeing that uh, there isn't a particular pitch type that's correlating with a, a maybe a, a expected... Um, probability here uh we see over on d-rob's screen though uh the bus place for a home run it looks like he's plotting that um pitch location again and he's trying to probably resize this so it uh looks nice and pretty jordan also with some interesting plots here looks like he's also doing launch speed and launch angle looking for that barreled ball but also uh including uh the direction uh, so whether it's bearing left, right, or center. Uh, so interesting uh, distribution plot here in terms of bearing. Oh, okay, so he's breaking it out now by bearing. Uh, oh, and this is really interesting, Meg. So now we're looking at home runs. Oh. Uh, okay. And depending on the the area as to where they're hitting the home run, whether it's bearing left center or right uh you may have different ways to generate certain home runs um because of how parks might be shaped or how hitters particularly uh, generate power uh so maybe line drives to Mm -hmm. uh you know the left and to the right field are more advantageous 
whereas pop flies, fly balls to center field may be better in terms of uh, hitting home runs out out into the middle of, of the field. Interesting. Oh. Wow, Jordan, Jordan with some interesting visualization here. Yeah, this is like almost like we didn't we did not see this level of data visualization from Jordan. I think in previous episodes, we, it's, it's, I'm not really gonna lie. It's one of the different contestants. We, I don't know. We, they yeah. really are. We haven't seen this level yeah. of data visualization from, in my opinion, any of them. Like even yeah. even D Rob. I think he's, D Rob is going above and beyond in terms of the yeah. data we've seen. From He's clearly before. familiar with how to plot this kind of data, um, but you know, they're all different contestants. Like, I mean, we're seeing um, like the the memes from David, from Michael. He is doing a lot of data visualization. But, you know, we honestly did not see this much data visualization from from him in past episodes. If you remember, like, apart from D Rob, they all were pretty much like bottom of the pack when it came to data visualization. That is right. Um, so it's kind of like, yeah, very very different. Um, I'm it's it just it goes to show how you really can spend two hours of live coding in so many different kinds of ways and um yeah. I will say that um you know Jordan, although he's been kind of slow and steady, um by my count he actually has as many I'd say plots at this point as D Rob and Michael. Uh, I know. And so uh, it's going to be... <laughs> this is going to be another tough one to really... to score. You guys, chat, please get ready for a lot of like anguished faces from Nick and myself when it comes time to this is gonna be scoring really data viz. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, not to, not to bias the opinions of others, but I think we both are, are seeing the same thing. Landon is the one who is... Uh, probably behind in terms of data viz right now um yep. we just haven't yep. seen a lot in terms of plotting he has plotted some i mean he did come out of the gate with his very first plot being a golden feature which is you know he's he hit the nail on the, on the head and then he's like all right and i just I'm want to, i just want everyone to see this i didn't realize this but um uh several minutes ago uh jordan actually overtook D Rob on the leaderboard. Oh ho ho! So, wow. So we are seeing um, this is Landon and the third position, Jordan in the fourth position, and D Rob in the fifth position. They're all right there next to each other. Uh, Michael has some work to do in terms of modeling, but from how he is currently uh, spending a lot of his time, maybe he is not focused on modeling. 10 minutes left to go as I say this, uh, and it looks like perhaps um, Michael is going to try to get all the points he needs to advance through data visualization, from what it seems to me. Um, but it's going to be extremely close at the top in terms of modeling. Holy F. Oh my god. Look yeah. at D-Rob with this meme visualization. Oh my god, no. That is, that's, um, hold on. I need to take a screenshot look, of that. Look at D-Rob with a meme visualization. Holy shit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, okay, that's, I, I'm impressed. I am impressed. I have, actually. like I said, Meg, I, I swore that we haven't even seen the limits of data viz. This is not what I meant, and this is so <laughs> amazing. Can you, what is, what? This guy um, spends six days learning how to meme and he comes up with Drake data viz. I mean, imagine, wow. I, Jesse, are you watching? I mean, the, you know, the student may become the master here. <laughs> Holy F. And, the, um, and this is true. Wow. This is, it is not where the pitch is at the plate. It is how hard you hit the pitch. That is... An incredible meme data viz. Holy F. Wow. And now he's making um, some comments to himself about the meme package he's using to layer memes. All right, so maybe we'll see uh, some sort of PR 
to the meme package he's using uh, this week sometime. <laughs> oh my god. Um, there's more like sliced driven development, as I like to call it. I love it. I honestly love it. Landon looks like he's training through another model. Uh, perhaps he. I saw him uh, just before he started running that cell take a look at the leaderboard, so perhaps he's uh, feeling uh, a little heat now that D-Rob and Jordan perhaps are uh, uh, catching up to him. So we'll see. He hasn't submitted another model since an hour ago, so uh, under 10 minutes to go, and uh, we are we will definitely be running to the finish line, sprinting to the finish line in terms of the modeling. Um, Michael Malarkey here. It looks like Michael is done with the modeling um this might you know his cell is running he think this might be his last prediction of the night um again i think he spent a lot of time focused on data viz and to be honest uh it was a lot of time well spent he created some incredible data visualization but d rob with a bomb there uh we'll see how that stacks up at the end meg are you ready to judge this I mean, I'm, I don't know if I look like I have, like, I'm, like, like I look like I'm stunned, but I am. I'm stu I'm still, like, processing, processing the meme data visualization uh, mashup there from D-Rob. This is going to be pretty tough. <laughs> this is going to be pretty tough doing data viz judging tonight. I, yeah. I mean, last week was difficult. This week, um... I don't know. I think the difference is probably Landon, to be honest. Like you said in in this in in, in tonight's episode, um, it's a three. You know, we're it, it's not a four way. It's 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 really I think a little more of like a three way contest. But um, I agree. yeah, it's still still really close. I agree with that. Oh my goodness, Michael Malarkey just submitted his model, and guess where it landed? Um, not last. I'm gonna <laughs> go with like I want to say that it's top of the. No. Oh my god. What the hell is happening? Oh my god, this cannot be happening. What? Six the... minutes, six minutes remaining, and this... Sometimes I have to tell myself that, like... Three, four, I don't five, know how, and six. I don't know how we could script this show, because holy shit. Three, four, um, five, and six, and they all... They... What? <laughs> the, okay. This is astonishing. This is astonishing. We have never seen something like this before. I mean, it was enough for me to see D-Rob and Landon's names, like just a hair from each other. Um, now we've got all of our contestants. We've got Michael, who is, you know, probably, you know, has the poorest record as far as modeling goes, just pulled ahead to the top on the public leaderboard. Um, what are we, what are we seeing? This <laughs> is with just minutes remaining for our first playoff episode tonight. Um, folks, bring your friends in here next time. They gotta, more people gotta see this happening. This is, this is blowing my mind right now. This is insane. 21 people on the leaderboard right now, by the way, uh, and, uh, hopefully more to come. Uh, five minutes left. We are scrolling through some of, uh, Landon's data visualization and notebook. Again, Landon... Uh, I think Meg is right. It is sort of a three-dog race, and Landon being the fourth one, uh, he just... The flavor of data viz that we're seeing from everyone else and Landon right now, I know Landon last week had some incredibly cool data viz. Um, we're just not seeing that tonight. Yeah, you know, I think it's something he doesn't really bring to Sliced. Like, I've seen kind of the data visualization and the data, like, art that he's created and shared on Twitter, and it's it's really cool. So we know that he can do it, but, um, you know, I think he's just being very judicious in where he spends his time. He knows he's a good modeler, but, I mean, he's also going to see his name on the leaderboard <laughs> just mashed up against his other competitors tonight. Um, so will that be enough? Um, Will that be enough for Landon to remain in the playoffs after tonight? Remember, y'all, you do get to vote at the end of this. Keep in mind, not just the data visualiz visualization, but also all the coding that's been happening for those who have been able to follow along. You see Landon tuning through his model using his bonsai package. It's Bayesian optimized uh, 
uh, grid searching. And, uh, you know, for weeks now, Landon's been at the top of the leaderboards. He's at the top again, but he has very stiff competition. We saw Michael Malarkey just put in a, uh, a model that at the moment is beating all three of our contestants on the public leaderboard. Remember, 1% of the sample is used. Uh, uh, it's just a small piece. We got 99% of the, the data to go, uh, but we do have a lot of data for the, for the test set tonight. So uh, there might be a little more to say about the data set, uh, about, the, about the leaderboard tonight than any other night. Uh, D-Rob here. We'll come back to D-Rob in a second. Let's go over to Jordan. And uh, Jordan, again, tuning through his Cat Boost model. If he hasn't taken a peek at um, the at the leaderboard recently, he will be strongly surprised that uh, uh, where he was, which was near the top, now he might be third. So, <laughs> um, Landon wow. here. We saw Landon. I just saw Landon take a peek at the leaderboard, and we see Jordan doing it now, uh, but the screen is uh, what it is. Landon uh, taking a peek at the leaderboard again. Two minutes to go. Predictions are about to fly in. D-Rob is trying to fit in one more tune, and oh my God. he's got less than, I'm guessing, 90 seconds to go for this. Uh, Michael Malarkey with more data viz here. Again, some uh, launch angle and uh, exit velocity plotting. Uh, this looks like by count. So depending on uh, uh, the count, uh, how many balls, how many strikes are in play, uh, we got some data viz of uh, how hard people are hitting the, the ball. Uh, we do see Landon throwing in his uh, seemingly last submission, but... Uh, he's looking at that score, and it's not as good as what he thought it was. Uh, at least uh, the feedback he's getting, he's going to have to make a really hard choice. I should have just linearly imputed. Oh, no, he's second-guessing himself. He really has to make a choice here. He's got less than a minute to go to, to get it in. And again, this is the question. Do you trust what the 1% leaderboard says, or do you trust the methods that you were doing to get you to where you got and He's literally wrestling with that question right now. I know it. He is. Uh, yeah. Uh, one hour on an elaborate trash imputation oh, scheme. He is molding. This man <laughs> is actually trash. molding. But is it enough? Is it enough to move on? Two people move on tonight. D Rob here plotting uh, a, a plot. Of home run percentage by count, trying to squeeze out a little more. Less than a minute to go now. Jordan here, uh, trying to train this model, and it he I don't know how long it's been going for. Five minutes for this damn thing to finish training. Oh he has no memes. Who knows if he's actually going to be doing anything for the chat vote? Uh, do we have Jor Team Jordan in chat? Who knows? It's pencils down. <laughs> All right. I've let them know that they need to stop coding, make their final submission, make sure that it's in and selected. That's our first episode of the playoffs. Oh my God, Meg. Wow. Wow. Um, I'm like already like, with like out of breath and it's only gonna, I mean, I think it's gonna, <laughs> the tenseness and like the, it's it's not, it's, it's not gonna end. You know, we have to, we have to, Judge, we have to do the reveal. Like, oh my god. Oh uh, my god, Meg. Wow. What an episode of Sliced. And it's not over yet. It is not over yet. No. Chat, it is you're you're up to bat now. Get it? Get it. You are up to bat. I love it. I love it. Yes, I'm about to pitch. Get it? <laughs> you a poll. Um and as a reminder, our chat vote for the playoff, <laughs> our chat vote for the playoffs tonight, um, our, the top winner of chat um, it will earn 10 points. And then the second place winner earns five points, unless I'm mistaken, is that, that, that is right. Um, and so I'm gonna kick off a poll right now. So chat, um, think about who you want to see advance to the playoffs. Is it Landon? Is it Jordan? Is it Michael? Or is it David? I am gonna kick things off now. 
Hopefully you practiced when we asked if a hot dog is a sandwich in chat. Hopefully you, you practiced your chat poll muscles. Put them to the test again. Let us know who you think should win the chat chat vote. I want to do a poll. Who thinks who do you who do you think is gonna win the modeling? Oh my god, I have no idea at this point. Um, Absolutely crazy. Who's who's the meme guy? D Rob, you are a meme guy now. Within one week you have become a meme guy. <laughs> absolutely wild oh god i need to like just browse my my notes here just to oh, wow um right now we see david d rob in the lead halfway to go for this vote one minute left y'all votes for landon votes for jordan no python love in the chat tonight apparently Oh my god, this is so tense, Meg. I know, it is. I'm... Oh. This... I'm gonna need to, like, go for a walk. Like, get some fresh air after this episode. It's, um, it is tense. Uh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. D-Rob, what a... What... <laughs> I have no words, Meg. I <laughs> can never. You cannot predict how these shows are gonna go. Um, D all right, does looks like we've it. got. Yep. D Rob does take it with uh, fifty-four percent of the vote, so that's ten points based off the new scoring. And uh, Michael gets five based off the new scoring, so we do see both Michael and David both with points from chat. So. Uh, the voting order uh, will also dictate how we uh, say the scores. So the order will go in is Jordan, Landon, Michael, and D-Rob. And how are we standing in terms of golden features, Meg? Um, yeah, so I think I was able to capture all of the golden features tonight, which you know was actually quite a few. Uh, I think we had a, a little bit of a golden feature drought our last episode. Um, but just as a really quick reminder for folks in chat, um, we may now include our contestants. The golden features tonight were each worth 10 points for the playoff uh, scoring changes. And they were first to plot um, pitch location by home run or not. And then the second golden feature was to aggregate home run rate by park. So, um, the let's see, the remind me who we do, who we're going with first. Uh, we'll go Jordan, Landon, Michael, and Lindy. Okay, Jordan, Landon, Michael, D. Rob. Okay, I get this wrong absolutely every single time. So, uh, first Jordan, I have him down for one golden feature, and this was pitch location. Location, so plotting pitch location. So Jordan stands currently at ten points overall for tonight's episode. Okay. And then uh, Landon, uh, we saw very little data visualization from Landon tonight, but his very first data visualization earned him a golden feature, which was, again, pitch location by uh, is home run or not. Uh, so he is also currently standing at 10 points. And then next we have uh, Michael, who uh, I actually do not have... Uh, any recorded golden features for. Um, so he has uh, five points so far from the chat vote. Um, although, if anybody wants to correct me, I did have some trouble seeing uh, Discord screens tonight, so uh, yeah, let me I, know if you need any amendments. <laughs> um, but I, I have... I didn't see plate X, plate Z from him. Yeah, we do, we saw like some launch angle stuff. Yeah. We saw, yeah, we saw definitely saw some X, Y stuff, but no, nothing on pitch location. Um, and then finally, D-Rob, whose timing was just impeccable here with a simultaneous golden feature discovery 
and meme referencing golden features. It was simultaneous. Um, we saw D Rob capture both of the golden features tonight. So he is the only contestant tonight that was able to get the um, aggregate home run rate by Park, which is that first one he discovered in coincidence with the meme about golden features. And then the second one, again, he also plotted pitch location by home run or not. Uh, so David Robinson had a had a good night for golden features. Um, he was able to redeem himself after, I mean, how do you not know how to plot air density or calculate air density? <laughs> you know, anyhow. Anyhow, um, so since D-Rob has the chat vote tonight, he's got 10 plus 20 golden features. So he is currently standing at 30 tonight. So, so far, he's in first place, uh, followed by Landon and Jordan with 10 points each, uh, and then Michael with five points. Okay. Um, all right, I am ready for data. Oh, I am getting a, I'm getting a correction from Michael that he did plot pitch location by home run. Pitch location by home run, okay. Yeah. Okay, so that would actually bring him up to a total of 15 points then. Okay. Uh, okay, so we've got one. We have, this is the best night for golden features. Although I don't know, I don't know. It depends on your perspective of whether that's by design or not. But that does bring up uh, Michael now into second place, uh, just behind D-Rob with 15 total points. Okay, uh, are we ready for Data viz plates. Jesus. No, Nick, but the show has to go on, right? Jesus. The show must go on. Um, okay, who are we doing first? We're doing Landon. Oh, this was. Or Jordan this, first. So, so Michael just posted this screenshot. This isn't. Oh. It, this is not. This is not exactly it. Close, but not it. He needs his his y-axis need to be plate Z. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well. Okay, this is the this is the first time I've been corrected on golden features, and the first time that I've had to take away <laughs> golden feature points. Um, and that's it's funny because I think we saw that plot during the show, and I said, "Ooh, is that going to be it?" Like I was watching him write that code, and then then we saw it did not include plate C. Yeah. So, um, all right. I'm sorry. I must rescind your golden feature points. Um, but Yes, LOL, it is an ice cube plot. Uh, okay, so Michael is back down at five points. And I'm just stalling at this point. I'm just stalling. All right, well, uh, well, well let's, let's, let's just get it let's going. Let's do Meg. it. Let's get it going. All right, All right let me... Jordan. We are scoring Jordan first. Let me just, can I just double check to make sure that all of my points like add up to 20? And yes. we are, we are still doing 20. Okay. All right, I think we're good. We're not good, but I'm gonna say that we're good. Okay. This is, I I feel the closeness, but here we go. You're you're ready with Jordan? I am. Okay. Three, two, one. Jordan Wilhelm. I gave him five. Meg gave him four. four. What is this? Yes, Queen. This is broad. Is this is broad. <laughs> what is? Uh, yes, Queen. It is. <laughs> Why four, Meg? Um, oh my god, why four? Um, I was really impressed with Jordan's data visualization this time around. Like, um, that was all really relative to his past performances, whereas, you know, the score needs to be relative to other, you know, the performances of other contestants tonight. And, you know, so I think, like, uh, you know, four is definitely respectable, I think, given kind of the field that we saw. Um, we saw a lot of great kind of like, I think we, we noted that it was very sort of like traditional EDA style plotting from Jordan, but he did, you know, spend a little bit of effort on some customization. Um, but, you know, just not quite to the level of, I think, you know, a couple of the other contestants uh, who scored higher, took away more points, got a fixed set of points. Um, but uh, yeah. I thought, that was uh, for me. That was a four. I thought Jordan did actually really well. I think um, something that will go uh, a little under the radar is his pacing of his plots. He didn't kind of shotgun yeah. all of his plots all at once. And uh, uh, as I was trying to keep as good of notes as I could, I really liked a lot of the plots that he was uh, uh, showing 
not just uh, you know related to the modeling side, but uh, I think he did try to get the the data to speak a little. So uh, I thought, and I also thought that that was a a new take from Jordan in general. So uh, good to see. All right, Landon, you ready? I am ready. Okay, three, two, one. Landon Buchner. Both of us give him a two. Two. Uh, <laughs> why two, Meg? Yeah, it's a two. Um, yeah, so I think, you know, we said it during the show. We saw an outstanding performance in terms of data visualization from Jordan, from Michael, from D-Rob. And, and um, you know, Landon, I think, set himself apart in a little bit of a different way in that he did not spend, you know, as much time on data visualization. Um, and just, you know, just didn't have a volume, didn't have, um, you know, it's just, we didn't see a lot of data visualization from, from Landon. And I think I've said before, when I've given a one, it's been sort of like a, a conci- conciliatory kind of thing. Like there was data visualization, therefore you, you got a, you got one point. Um, but I do think that, you know, the data visual- visualization that he did pull off was, you know, worthy of just, you know, slightly more than just one point. Um, and it was a nice touch that it happened to be a golden feature at the same time. So um, it was a nice plot. Uh, let's go with Michael Malarkey. So we each had two for Landon. Yes. See, I'm like talking and gesticulating and I need to now. <laughs> yeah, I get, the, I get the benefit of, uh, you know, just uh, listening to your, to your yeah. description. <laughs> Yeah, and then you're like, same, same, same. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna go like a give somebody like a 19 or something. Jesus. This episode, and you'd be like, yeah. <laughs> then, I, then I get, then I you're really gonna, get you're to gonna do see that. me get, you're gonna see me get fired from Sliced on air. Uh, <laughs> wait, can we fire each other for oh. both co-hosts? <laughs> can we report each other to, to like HR <laughs> or HR team? Uh, if Slice never has to hire an HR team, I'm out. <laughs> okay. Um, um, okay. Anyway, Michael Malarkey, you ready? Yes. Three, two, one. Michael Malarkey. We both gave him a six. Why six, Meg? Um, well, do I even need to say it? Like, we're so in tune, obviously. Like, <laughs> you know, we have the same <laughs> kidding. Um, my, uh, Michael had beautiful data visualizations. I mean, they were just, like, outstanding. Like, the fact that his very first data visualization was a Sankey plot of all plot types. Like, I mean, and then, like, that was that was just gorgeous. I mean, and it was um, really cool displays of the data you know, all, you know, because I'm speaking and, and Nick is not, I will say, you know, he really let the data speak. <laughs> that's an, that's an, a Nickism or a Wanism, if you prefer. Um, so he let it breathe. He let it speak. Um, he decanted that data set um, very well um, in his data visualization. Um, we, I mean, it was just like really creative. Um, we saw also there was like that radio plot, you know, another use of like polar coordinates. Um uh, we saw like the <laughs> the ice cube plot, which I like. It's a little like tongue in cheeky little reference to some memes from past episodes. Um, he clearly spent a lot of time, you know, in the regular season, leading up to the regular se- season, really polishing, you know, his data visualization chops, and they paid off. I mean, they're they're gorgeous. The only critique that I want to share is perhaps that um, I think comparing our contestants. Um, uh, well, we'll get to it with D-Rob, but I think there could have been just a little bit maybe more like insight um, uh, in the data. So I think there was some creative choices, but maybe not always sort of like the most intuitive or natural way to present the data. So it's sort of like that creativity kind of practicality, pragmatism kind of trade off. Um, uh, a lot of flashiness, um, you know, which earns some points, but I think there are some trade offs uh, that come with that. So. Do I talk too much? Am I just no, like this rambling? Is, this <laughs> is good. Well, while you do that, I, I check the other side of the <laughs> Great, great. Okay. okay, ready for D-Rob? Um, no, I was just gesticulating and talking. Okay, so D-Rob, here we go. Everybody knows because they can also add up to 20. That, but that's right. 
<laughs> but here we go. I'm ready. Three, two, one. D Rob. I gave him a seven. You gave him an eight. Why eight, Meg? I mean, they he they were literally like textbook baseball statistics plots that that D Rob was creating, which I have learned should come no as no surprise uh, after you know learning that he literally did write book on baseball statistics um so i mean obviously you know this was very familiar territory for david um but you know it is what it is and it played it played out to his success i think in terms of data visualization you know the one thing i mentioned with respect to michael's visualization was just sort of like maybe just like a slight like lack of like that insight factor maybe just like a maybe a slight mismatch between like plot type and kind of the the data or the story that you want to tell um but i and I, I think that's sort of like the edge that david had over michael in terms of data visualization um and when it came to flair obviously we were all blown away by the the meme data viz uh, combination um so it was tough though like i i this was definitely an episode where I changed my scores quite a bit and, and D Rob was higher and you know, Michael was low. It was, it was a lot of like push and pull uh, in this episode, as far as like uh, data visualization, really impressive, really exciting all around. So. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. the scores going into the modeling round and remember the top two scores will move on. Okay. And uh, by, by how the modeling scores work, the first place model will get 30 points, the second place model will get 10, the third place model gets 5. But because D-Rob currently has 45 points going into the modeling round, um, he yeah. actually already is securing his place into the semi-finals, okay? Uh, it's actually mathematically not possible for any of the other contestants to knock D-Rob out of the semis right now. So, who will be joining D-Rob in the semifinals? Let's find out. Let's do it. Oh my god. Uh, I'm so nervous for this because I couldn't believe what we were seeing on the leaderboard with just like moments, minutes remaining. Um, before, before we... Before we get going on that, we will say that the person who won um, the uh, the giveaway is uh, has this person won before, Meg? I'm gonna send you a link to a name. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to check. I'm I'm realizing I, that I don't see them on my list. So okay, if they're not okay. on my list, I'm pretty confident that they're okay. Okay. But um, they've been high before, but I don't think they've won. I, I think let's, yeah, let's make that tentatively correct. Because I had the same question. I need to be able to check on my, my corporate laptop. Like, uh, okay. so that's the problem. Okay. Um, so, but yes, let's pencil them in. Okay. So I'll, I'll be the... Uh, it, I'll, I'll also be the bad guy if this isn't the case. But um, congratulations to Professor Bottle Services student. Professor Bottle Services student, you have the best score of the night. Uh, not just the best score, uh, you know, with any conditionals in terms of contestants or people who've won already, but you actually have the number one score. So, Damn. Uh, Professor... Bottle Services student, you have the number one score of the night. Uh, we'll reach out through Kaggle to get you your uh, Deep Learning Institute code and Kaggle swag. So congrats, claps and chat for Professor Bottle Services student. And now without further ado, it's time, Meg. Hi, it's time. Do it, should, I, should I play dramatic music? Yeah, even though I don't think I will be able to hear it, I think you should. Okay. Um, uh, 
Um, like tense music, like yes. Okay. Oh no, that's not. That's not. That's definitely not the song. Um. <laughs> Um, is chat hearing hearing you like hold on i have to scroll through like okay i just have to check to see if this is um <laughs> uh okay to play i see okay yeah don't get us like uh taken down for violating some dmca stuff okay um, I'm just not going to chance it. Okay. Okay. I mean, do you want me to sing dramatically? Like with that? <laughs> okay. Uh, Jordan Wilhelm. Jordan Wilhelm. Remember, this is log loss. So the lowest score wins. Okay. And D-Rob is already going into the, into, um, the, the semifinals. So the person, uh, with the, uh, I'll, I'll keep track of who has the highest score. So right now, Jordan has 19 points, and Jordan has a log loss score of 0 0.0834. Okay. Yeah. I, ha I have to figure out how many... <laughs> how many significant digits yeah. to read? Yes. Yeah. 0 0.0834. Okay, so right now, uh, currently in the lead. Um, so Landon, Landon Buchner has a score. Remember, lower is better. Landon Buchner has a score of 0 0.0822. Okay. So Landon currently currently in the lead. Um so he right now would be moving on into the playoffs. Now, Michael. Michael Malarkey has a score of zero point zero. Eight seven seven yeah. <clears throat> zero point zero eight seven seven. So right now, Landon uh, first in modeling, Jordan second, Michael third. D Rob's score now. D Rob's <laughs> score is zero point zero. Eight, two, Ooh. five. Oh my God! Zero point zero eight two five. <laughs> so Landon actually wins tonight. Wow. The modeling. D Rob second. Jordan third. I mean, I I know that. D Rob was already in, you know, the in for the finals with a score um, between chat, Golden Features, Data Viz, but oh my God, still seeing Landon and David so close, incredible, incredible. I'm yes. modeling. Um, so the scores as it Beautiful. shakes out, fifty five points tonight goes to D Rob. He places first. Landon second with forty four points. They both move on to the semifinals in two weeks. Um, we will say goodbye and thank you and good job, good work, congratulations. Thank you to Jordan Wilhelm and Michael Malarkey. Let's get some claps and some hearts in chat. Good games, everyone. Thank you, Jordan, and thank you, Michael. Incredible, incredibly, incredibly tight. Super tight all the way through. Um, 
this was an incredible night. Yes. Super yeah, if you're close. one of the contestants, you got to watch the VOD. I mean, man, it was, it was, it was wild. Insane. Yeah. Insane. So thank you, Jordan, and thank you, Michael. Um, it thank is the, you. It is the end of the road for your playoff but it is not the end of the road for our winners tonight. D-Rob and Landon moving on. They will face each other again in two weeks. Joining them. Cannot wait. <laughs> joining them will be decided next week. Four contestants in the playoffs. Two of them will move on to the semifinals. Holy F. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Holy Whew. F. Okay. Yeah, con congrats. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Um, it was outstanding. Wow. All right. Moving on to... And remember, y'all, um, stream starts 8.30 p.m. Eastern, not just on Tuesdays, but Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. I want to give a big shout-out to our supporters. Thank you, uh, our studio. Thank you to Streamlit. Thanks to... NVIDIA, and thank you, Z by HP. Check out Z by HP over at hp.com slash data science. Uh, I'm Nick Wan. I'm the manager of data science over at KFC. And my, uh, and my stream, you're on my stream channel. Meg? <laughs> hey, I'm Meg Rizdahl. I am a uh, product lead at Kaggle. All right. And uh, thanks for sticking around all the way to the end. Stick with us through the raid, y'all. We're going to go over to my friend Sympathy's channel. Uh, she's uh, she's also raising some money to uh, uh, to help the Coral Reef, I believe. So um, so stick with us through the raid. We're going over to Sympathy's channel. Join us in the raid. We'll see you over there. And uh, we'll see you, if not tomorrow, we'll see you on Sliced next Tuesday. But, uh, See you on the internet. Use the hashtag. Use Say the hashtag. Hi. Yes. Make sure you uh, participate in the giveaway. Make sure you participate in the giveaway. Um, use that hashtag on Twitter. X or hashtag slice. And also, uh, feel free to give us feedback. Uh, exclamation feedback in the chat to get our feedback form. Uh, thank you, everyone, for our first night of playoffs. Another three weeks to go. They're all going to be freaking crazy like this. I just know it. Yes. I, I'm, I'm feeling great vibes right now. Have a good night, chat. We'll see you over in Sympathy's chat.